We are live inside the Hornets Nest on the campus of Baker High School for a big 7A Region 1 rivalry. Theodore comes in trying to pick up their fifth win in a row over Baker, but the Hornets are ready to sting Theodore and remain undefeated this year. Are you ready for some football? Well, it's headed your way. Good evening and welcome to the MCPSS pregame show brought to you by Bishop State. I'm Al Whedon, he's Corey LeBounty, and Corey, we are excited about this ball game tonight. Yeah, it's a huge 7A Region 1 matchup early in the season that could determine whether you stay at home or whether you travel in the playoffs. An early matchup is very important to both these coaches because they know that it's an early gauge on where they stand within their own region. Right. And 7A Region 1 is one of the toughest and largest classifications in the state of Alabama. Both of these teams had big wins last week. It was Theodore over Sarah Land, and Baker held UMS right scoreless right here inside the Hornets nest. That was quite a surprise, Corey. Yeah, that's a great way for Coach Steve Norman to get his season started with a shutout on top of playing very well offensively. All three phases of the game were executed last week against UMS Wright. We'll have to see the same thing tonight here in the Hornets' nest. Speaking of execution, Corey, let's go to your checklist. What do you have on tap for us tonight? I think Theodore is the visiting team, right? Yes, Theodore will be the visitors on the scoreboard tonight. And the first thing for the Theodore Bobcats, they must have takeaways from turnovers. And what do I mean by that? Creating the con and controlling the turnover margin. That's going to be huge for this defense. Also, they have to have a big Bobcat push up front in the trenches is where they're going to control the line of scrimmage. Coach Carrier loves to run the football, and they have a plethora of backs to do so. And they must control the crowd. This is a raucous Hornets nest. We know the Hornet hooligans have a lot to cheer about when things are going well for the Hornets. So tonight, Theodore can take the crowd out of it by controlling the crowd. You look on the other side of things for Baker. Baker must control the clock. They were able to eat up some eight and a half to nine minutes of the clock against UMS right in the third quarter by right. running the football effectively. So they're going to have to control that clock. They're going to have to score in the red zone. That's going to be huge for this team tonight, whether it's field goals or six points. They have to be very effective inside the 20. And special teams possessions. Mm. Coach Steve Norman loves to steal a possession or two with an onside kick or right. a fake punt, anything he can do to salvage his team's possessions. He'll do so tonight. All right, Cora, we'll check in with you later on and see how the teams are progressing with your checklist and your keys to the game. Right now, let's take a look at the weather, the BSN forecast for tonight. And right now at kickoff, as we get close to 7 o'clock, we're expected to have a temperature about 79 degrees. Look at that rain percentage, 22%, Corey, and the humidity at 85%. Now, as we proceed through the game, just like last week, man, the humidity is going to rise. So make sure you have your towel ready, Corey. As the temperature drops, the humidity goes up, and also the chance of rain goes down 14 to 15% as well. So hopefully we will be dry. We did notice that was a slight shower before we got here for the kickoff, so the field is a bit damp tonight. So I see what kind of impact that's going to have. Speaking of impact, Corley Bounty, who are the impact players tonight for the ball game, man? For the Theodore Bobcats, it's going to be the big bruising running back, Kirsten Rogers. He's a senior running back for Theodore, and we've seen him running since he was a freshman yeah. for Eric Collier. He's very powerful, very elusive, and he loves to have that contact. Also for Theodore, Will James. He had five tackles five pass breakups and one interception a week ago against Sarah Land. Those are going to be the impact players for the Theodore Bobcats. For the Baker Hornets, you look no further than their quarterback, Landon Larry, the senior quarterback. He's going to be very imperative to have a great game and call the signals correctly, check the line of scrimmage. He's a guy to watch tonight for Baker. Also, Carter Colvin, the senior linebacker, his first year of football here, varsity football. He's a baseball player by sure trade, is. but has been very efficient here in the preseason as well as the first game against UMS Wright. Carter Colvin, someone to look out for for the Hornets. Also, adding about Carter Colvin, Coach Norman told me earlier this week, Corey, the kid plays a freshman, played a lot of baseball, but last week it had 12 tackles, Two tackles for loss, and he forced a fumble as well. So we might be calling Colvin's name a lot tonight here inside the Hornets there. I agree with you, Al, and that's what you want to see. You want to see from week to week whose name will be called. I know Coach likes to reward his players when they do well on the Baker side. They got that shutout. Now let's see if the offensive production can match 
the defensive production from a year, I mean, from a week ago, meaning right. number-wise trying to score maybe 28 points against a stingy Theodore Bobcat defense. It is going to be a great contest tonight. We told you it is 7A Region 1. We like to call it Big Boy Football, and it is headed your way. Theodore has taken on Baker. We're very excited to be able to bring you the broadcast tonight, so make sure you stick with us. Kickoff is headed your way in a matter of moments. Quarter, you ready to go up and get this thing started? Absolutely, Alan. Like you said, Big Boy Football here in West Mobile. You have two perennial powers. Theodore has won the region two out of the last three years. Well, Baker's trying to get over that hump, and I guarantee Steve Norman this week has made sure his team was focused. That's Their right. practice Monday got cut short a little bit because of the rain. Like you mentioned, tonight, rain's not really going to be a huge factor in regards to the playing conditions. The field will have dried up due to this humidity and how humid it is, but I want to see conditioning-wise and penalty-wise where we're going to be also week one to week two is normally the biggest improvement for any football team across the state of Alabama. All right, Corey and I are going to take it upstairs. We're going to come back with the kickoff. You've been watching the MCPSS Game of the Week pregame show brought to you by Bishop State. Don't move. Kickoff is headed your way. I'm Ashley Rich, District Attorney. Today I want to talk to you about a program that we at the District Attorney's Office has with the Mobile County Public School Systems to help with the bullying issues that are going on in today's world because of social media and because our young people think it's okay to bully others. It's not okay to bully others. Bullying is repeated verbal and physical abuse, ongoing verbal and physical abuse. We at the Mobile County District Attorney's Office want to help the community, we want to help the public school system, and we want to stop bullying within our community. It's really, really important that we do so. And parents need to be responsible if their child is either being bullied or if their child is a bully. Parents need to be involved to stop the bullying or to help the child if they are being bullied. And we at the Mobile County District Attorney's Office and the Mobile County Public School System are also here to help. When we say Bishop State Community College is a great place to start, we really mean it. Want to major in psychology, engineering, criminal justice, English, history, or something else? Take your general education courses with us, then transfer your credits to the four-year university of your choice. Want to learn a trade and go straight into the workforce? We have the programs and the trainings to help you land a high-wage and high-demand career. Save time and thousands while conveniently taking classes safely online or on campus. Register now. Bishop.edu. Hello, I'm Renee Phillips, your host of Homeroom. Will you join us as we talk with the students, teachers, and staff about all of the great things happening in our schools? That's right, Renee. Not only are we here to keep you informed about the great things happening in our schools, but to also keep you updated on safety issues. Our show, Safe Schools, looks at ways to keep your child and our students safe. Not only are we looking at ways to keep your child and our students safe, but to keep you informed on how to connect with us. Manténgase informado aquí en Conexión a Padres. And we also score big from pre-K to high school with MCPSS Athletics. And then Inside Education puts it all together for you, showing you the ins and outs about news and events taking place across the Mobile County Public School District. We do this to keep you informed. It's early in the season, but tonight is a big game for both Baker and Theodore. The Hornets haven't started off 2-0 since 2016, and the Bobcats are looking to extend their win streak over Baker to five in a row. Get ready, because the kickoff is headed your way right now inside of the Hornets' nets. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Coralie Bounty, and there's Adam Gata kicking it off. 
to the Bobcats as they take the ball right at about the 28-yard line and immediately wrapped up and tackled. Corey, we have action underway for you right here from Clem Richardson Stadium. Again, a great 7A Region 1 matchup. The humidity is extremely high. So again, as I mentioned in the pregame, conditioning will be a factor. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineups. I believe we have Baker up. Actually, Theodore has the ball, so we'll check in with it a few plays here around the corner. Baker won the toss, and they deferred to the second half. But we can tell you, coming onto the field is Demetrius Pogue. He will be quarterbacking for the Theodore Bobcats. Big win last week against UMS Wright, as we talked about in the pregame show. And there they are starting it off, handed to the big man. Kirsten Rogers as he goes up the middle for about two. It'll be second down and eight coming up for the Bobcats. Anytime you can come up from your cornerback position and make that type of tackle, gang tackling is very important. There's a lineup. Talked about Pogue right there. He gives an RPO element that can help extend drives for the Bobcats. We just talked about Rogers. He's going to run it a lot. Also up front, you got Caden Johnson and Ronald Stevenson. The Bobcat line averages 290 pounds, so they'll be providing a lot of blocking tonight for Kirsten Rogers as they go with the RPO. A little quick pass. That pass incomplete. Could not get it out there to Raheem Quinty. It'll be, I'm sorry, Braden Jenkins on that attempt. It'll be third and long coming up here. For Theodore. Braden Jenkins, the 5'9", 175 pound junior, just couldn't squeeze the pigskin. Going to bring up third down and eight yards to go. Theodore looking to check with the sidelines. Offensive coordinator Justin Ridgeway signaling in the calls for Theodore. Talk about that RPO element that Demetrius Pogue adds for the Bobcats. He rolls out to his right, just lofts it up. That pass incomplete. He was trying to reach Cam Johnson. So it's going to be fourth down, and I believe Theodore will be punting as they bring on Miguel Frias. He's actually the kicker for them, but he's going to do some punting as well, Corey, but let's double-check that, see who may be going back to punt for them. That's a big-time play by defensive coordinator J.C. Todd in that first three series of downs. Fourth down and long coming up for Theodore deep in their own territory. And again, you just have to stay solid if you're Baker. Actually, it's Demetrius Pogue. He's the backup punter. Low snap for Pogue. He gets it off. His knee was down, Al. Ah, uh, Corey, you're right. And Alan Duhon, our white hat, is right on top of it. The young man, he plays quarterback. Coach Collier said he could punt it sometime. But there it is, our white hat, Alan Duhon. Johnny on the spot. So, wow, this is something you talked about as Coach Norman told us in the week. They wanted to steal a possession and get a score. This is almost like stealing one without having to do the work, Corey. Short field right here for the Baker Hornets. Playing with a lot of motivation after blanking UMS. And exactly, the knee was down. Great call by the White Hat, and now you're bringing up a first down and goal to go for the Hornets from the Bobcat eight-yard line. Now, in situations like this, they don't have Landon Larry in. They bring up backup quarterback Josh Flowers. They kind of do a Wildcat situation with Flowers. He was, had the only touchdown last week, and a jet sweep as they hand that ball off. Jamari Hawkins with the jet sweep around the edge gets them closer. It'll be second and goal. Hawkins, the 5'10", 170-pound senior, has a lot of speed on the play, but you mentioned backup quarterback Joshua Flowers, short-yarded situation. His older brother, Desharius Flowers from Viger fame. I remember that so name. You definitely have to remember that great running back for Viger, but again, now you're looking at second down and goal to go for the Hornets from the five-yard line of Theodore. Got a little bunch formation set up here. Hawkins in motion. Flowers keeps it up the middle. That's a five-yard touchdown for Josh Flowers, and Baker is on the board, up six to nothing. Set up by the short field, the low snap, which caused the downing of the knee and capitalizing in the red zone early in the game, which was right on my checklist of things that the Baker Hornets had to do well. Well, they have six on the board here early. Hunter Kilgore on for the PAT. We said it earlier, Flowers had the only touchdown for Baker last week. Extra point is up, and it is good. So early on, Baker steals a possession, and they get a score. But we'll talk about that steal on the other side of this break. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week, brought to you by Bishop State.
This is a program for any middle school student who's actually behind. This opportunity offers kids a chance to do two grades in one year. If it wasn't for Star Academy, I would still be in eighth grade and probably still struggling. We are one-on-one. -on -one. We have small classrooms and we're able to give students that personal touch, that personal attention. I know I'm coming to see good teachers, good attitude, and also they're here to teach us what we need to learn. Welcome, welcome back to the MCPSS High School football game of the week. Al Weed and Corey Bounty. And boy, we have started off excited here inside of the Hornets nest, Corey, as Baker take, takes advantage of the, literally it was a ball over on downs because the ball was down because Demetrius Pogue's knee was down. And when you start having those type of special teams miscues early, it can make the difference in the game. But I'll tell you one thing, Eric Collier is going to regroup his troops in this second possession is going to be critical for the Bobcats to respond. Got to flow that one up. Raheem Quinney is almost level. They say he is out of bounds. Just to the right of us here atop the press box at Hornet Stadium, we'll say he's about at the 24-yard line. So we'll get another look at the Theodore Bobcats offense. That defense for Baker really stiffened up on that first drive, caused a three and out, and literally caused some points to be placed on the board as the Bobcats ran out on the field now. They're gonna say the ball is spotted right at the 24 yard line. The scoreboard says 23, it just changed to 24. But again, Theodore loves ball control. You know, they have the ability to throw the football, Pope does effectively, but you just need to make sure that you don't get away from what you do well early. Pope rolls out, looking to connect, and does the, get that one out there to Tavares Sullivan. Take a look at the Baker Hornet defense. The Hornets play a 3-4 with defensive end Jason McMillan leading an upperclassman line that averages 225 pounds up front. Sam linebacker Carter Colvin, he's gonna be making tackles from the middle with help from Will linebacker Gary Byers. Out on the edge, cornerback Kel Britford will try and snag some picks for the Hornets and he will be all over the field. Corey, I believe Carter Colvin, that was one of your impact players for tonight, right? Absolutely, coming away and Baker just taking what the defense gives them. That pass completed to Raheem Quinney, the 5'10", 180 pound senior. And they're gonna bring it back with the flag on the play right at the line of scrimmage, which normally indicates in the area of holding. Possibly. And that was enough for a first down. So let's see what the call is from Allen Duhon here. Legal mm. man downfield, Corey. We saw that a couple times last week. And that's tough because you complete a pass, but you think that the lineman is supposed to stay at the line of scrimmage and then he gets caught down the field. I was looking at the wide receiver bring the football in, knowing that he had enough for the first down, but instead of being first and 10, now you put yourself at second down and eight from right outside the 25-yard line. Rodgers in the backfield. They toss it out to him. He gets some blocking. He barrels his way forward near the line to gain is the 34. I believe he may be about a yard shy. It'll be second and short coming up here for Theodore. Looks like Caver on the stop for the Hornets, but I love the tempo here I by do Theodore too, going Corey. quickly. I love the tempo. Up the middle goes Poe. So Demetrius Poe keeps it and picks up the first down and the chain gains on the move. And as they move, the clock briefly stops for a moment. But again, that's the type of drive you want to answer out of three and out. You come right back out and you make deeper, Baker's defense stay on the field a little bit longer than they did in that first possession. Polk tosses it over to Ryan Quinney, tight end. He drops it, but it goes out of bounds. That's enough for another first down, Corey. Quinney, the big, versatile tight end, six foot, 235 pound senior, was a huge difference maker one week ago against Saraland. We sure saw was. him get it to the house and get him some points on the board, but he proves to be effective first and 10 for Justin Ridgeway's offense. Ball sitting at the midfield stripe at the 50. Little play action, Pogue looking to connect going downfield. <laughs> Cannot get it. To the other Quinny, that's Raheem Quinny, incomplete. It looks like 
Jaden Campbell came in with the pop there, Core. A little bit high on the pass, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, the defender, Campbell, does a great job to make sure Theodore is not able to pull it in. When you get ahead of the sticks on first down, you can dial up that type of play from right here at midfield. Theodore goes to the sidelines for the check with me, but I like the call on first down. You have an That's opportunity to open good. up the playbook. Second and 10 at the nine minute mark here in the first quarter. Al Whedon, Corley Bounty. Great night for football. Had a little showers earlier on, and hopefully they will stay away for the remainder of the evening. A little quick out to Cam Johnson. He can't haul it in, Corey, so it's going to be third and 10 coming up for Theodore. Cam Johnson's a big target at 6'4", 180 pound junior, but you go from first and 10 to third and 10. You know, you look at this defense of Baker, they line up in a 3-4 defense, right. and that's why they're trying to find the soft spots in between the linebackers of the Hornets. But third down and 10, let's see if they try to get half of it right here because they're right at midfield. Yeah, kind of net no man's land. Little jet sweep as they give it coming over. Sullivan gets nowhere, actually takes a loss. So it's going to be fourth down here coming up for Theodore. The Hornets swarming on defense. Man. Jaden Campbell, six foot, 170 pound junior, coming up to stop the play. And again, you're right at the 50 yard line. You have an opportunity to flip the field with this punt here. Demetrius Pogue back to punt to receive Javen Williams. Last week he ran one back 77 yards, but it was called back for a block in the back. So he is definitely electrifying. So the Baker, uh, Offense coming on the field. Now we can get their starting lineup. Talk about them. They're led by quarterback Landon Larry. Larry has a good arm, and when he throws, look for him to connect with two talented wideouts, Jabari Hawkins, and we just talked about Javen Williams. Williams has that big play capability as a punt returner. Up front, the offensive line is led by senior right tackle to Darius Waiters. He's 6'2", 278 pounds, Corey. He has a lot of beef up front. That offensive line averages 241 pounds. The first scoring drive by Baker, two plays for five yards and a touchdown. This is their second offensive possession. The playbook opens up here. Sure does. Larry trying to go over the middle to Javen Williams, and he does it. Williams takes it to the house. That is a touchdown for the Baker Hornets. Looks like about 65 yards, Corey. Does not get any better wow. than that pitch and catch. And let me tell you something about Landon Larry, folks. The 6'1", 175-pound senior told me a couple of days ago, hey, Corey, are you going to say something good about me? Uh -oh. I said, young man, if you throw a pass like that, I most certainly will. And yesterday after practice, okay. he was working with Mr. Williams, trying to throw the football in the bucket from about 25 yards out. Well, I tell you what, that wasn't the bucket he hit. Yeah, uh, today, he hit his wide receiver in stride, and Baker strikes again. And the PAT is up and good for Hunter Kilgore. Baker shocking Theodore right now, 14 to nothing. We'll be back with more action. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It was just like an extension of home. Bishop give you that outlet to give you a career, a successful career. We're doing some great things at Bishop State. Keep an eye on us. Bounty, you called it. There he is, Landon Larry. As you talked about your story yesterday about him hitting the trash cans like the pros do. And uh, the one thing he has in his favor, Corey, his trash can moves, Javen <laughs> Williams. <laughs> Absolutely. And Javen Williams wanted Man. me to make sure I did not call him Javon Williams. No, so Javen Williams, the six foot, 160 pound senior, getting it done, catching it in stride. And that's just a great pitch and catch as wow. Landon Larry stepped into that throw. Great job by the offensive line, giving him protection also. There's a kickoff from Adam Gata. And a flag on the play. We'll wait for the call here. I wonder if that may be offside, score. Dead ball. I mean, uh, yeah, I was about to say false start. But offside. 
I don't, All right. I don't know if we can take a look at that replay again real quick, but the cornerback for Theodore just fell down, and when he fell down, he didn't have any help over the top. None. And I wasn't quite sure to see who that was who did fall down, was in that coverage with Williams. But, you know, any time you catch a defender falling down and you're able to catch it in stride, it's easy money. Defensive back does Here a great job backpelling, but no help over the top. And it's just one-on-one. -on -one. He falls down. I want to say it was Jordan Casher who did fall down, but great catch. Six points on the board for Baker. All right. Got to get to do over here. I see no flags, and he booms that one. <laughs> Will James takes it at the five-yard line, comes up the middle, and the Hornets basically just laying in wait for him as they wrap him up at about the 24-yard line. One of the impact players, Carter Colvin, on special teams making a difference. And this young man's 5'7", 165 pounds finding a way to contribute to his team. We mentioned that this is one of his first years playing varsity football, as he's normally a baseball player. Uh, but again, when you can give those type of contributions, that's what's important. All right, Corey LeBounty, your offensive coordinator, Justin Ridgeway. What are you talking to uh, your quarterback, Demetrius Pogue, about? You just want to stay, hey, stay composed. We've been able to hit the wide receivers on a couple of throws. We're not able to get 14 points back in one possession. So don't force it, just relax and stick to the script, even though it's changed just a little bit. Ball back at the 24-yard line again. Kirsten Rogers, he is clipped up right there. Coming up from his wheel linebacker position, Gary Byers makes the tackle. Gary Byers, 5'9", 220 pound junior, shoots the gap and is able to disrupt that at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play for Theodore, second down and 10 yards to go. If this line of scrimmage, if Theodore is able to get any type of push, they'll be able to get the kind of drive that they want because Eric Collier is a run first type of coach. That is true, you know Theodore is based on running. Little counter action right there as they get that ball out to Braden Jenkins once again. That's his second reception. I'm sorry, the first one was incomplete, his first reception tonight. We've seen Braden Jenkins with a lot of speed, the 5'9", 175 pound junior, just shows you the burners, but this is a critical third down and five yards to go here Big for one. Theodore with the ball resting exactly on their own 30 yard yeah, line. It looks like 30 yard line. Theodore has picked up a couple first downs. Quarterback keeper. Demetrius Pogue, I believe he is going to be short by about a yard. Jason McMillan, the 6'2", 220-pound senior defensive end, making a huge stop for Theodore. Going to be one yard short right here. Decision time for head coach Eric Collier. And it looks like, Corey, they may be going for this. I would. I, I trust my big senior offensive line up front. We have uh, Kirsten Rogers lining up, almost like a wildcat, if you want to call it. Yep, he's going to take it right up the gut. I love it. And he's up the gut and going. One guy, oh, tripped up right there at the midfield stripe. A flag comes in late, Corey. And you're seeing the Bobcat instead of the Wildcat uh, <laughs> in this go. situation. But you put your best offensive player, and you want him to get one yard, 215 pounds can do so. Rodgers has trimmed down a little bit. Sure Had has. enough yardage to get the first down. Let's see what the call is. And they're going to wave oh, it off. they're going to wave it off. That's a great offensive call by Justin Ridgeway and head coach Eric Collier, believing that his team, all led by a senior offensive line, That's David right. Wells, Kerry Jackson, Ronald Stevenson, Evan Kramer, and Caden Johnson, all seniors across the front offensive line. And we're, we're, it looks like we may take the first heat timeout already. Uh, looks as if that's going to be the case at 617. Allen Duhon is going to take the heat timeout. So we're trying to get in contact with our principal here at Baker, Jason Peru. I see him down on the end up right near the end zone there, Corey. So if we can uh, get the headsets on him. Now, Corey, it looks as if he, he, he's ready and waiting. Uh, or maybe we're going to go to Chip too. Minton from Theodore. I see he, they're both on the same sideline, as they a matter are. of fact, Corey. So uh, maybe we'll have one of those two coming up here. And it just does appear to be our heat timeout. Well, again, 14 to 0 our score with 617 remaining here in the first quarter of action. So you just have to be ready here as looking at the scoreboard if you're Theodore, one possession at a time, one play at a time. All right, let's take it down and 
Checking with the principal down at Theodore High School, Mr. Chimp Mitten. Mr. Mitten, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Well, not so good right now. Right, right. Uh, not, not exactly the way you want this ball game to start here for you no, Bobcats. No, but hopefully we'll get it going pretty soon. Well, we know that uh, Coach Collier and his uh, coaching hey, staff, they're definitely going to be able to uh, hey, get Gary. things together here for you, Mr. Mitten. So I believe we have some technical difficulties. Can you hear me, Mr. Mitten? Can you hear him? Don't believe he can hear, so we'll check back when we'll try to get that audio taken care of. We'll take it back down to the field as Theodore is going to have first and 10 ball on the 48 yard line of Baker. Big time play on fourth down brings up a fresh set of downs right at the 48 yard line of the Hornets. The first time this evening that the Bobcats have crossed midfield. Polk tosses it out to Kirsten Rogers as he picks up maybe one or two. Second and eight coming up here for Theodore. Tripped up by Gary Getting Byers. Up slow that's too, Corey. huge. Got him probably right around mm. the ankle. And that's something critical for the Bobcats to look at. And your hope Rogers is yeah. able to walk that one off as he is the workhorse he is. for this Bobcat offense. Back up running back coming in playing flanker Andrew Palmore, number 23. So he's already on the field. Hopefully we'll get to see Rogers later on. So second and eight coming up here for the Bobcats as they get the call from Justin Ridgeway. Down 14 points early in the contest. The Hornet Hooligans, very excited. Quick pass to Raheem Quinney. That's enough for the first down as they pass us here atop the Baker press box. And they're getting close to the red zone, Corey. Raheem Quinney, Ryan Quinney, it's definitely the Quinney brothers <laughs> who are getting the workload of receptions for this Theodore Bobcat offense. But it's so important that the 5'11", 185-pound senior quarterback, Demetrius, Demetrius Pogue, puts it on the money to his open wide receivers, and he's taking what the defense is giving him. Theodore addresses out about 85 players, returning six on offense. They have 22 seniors on that team. You talked about it, Corey, the entire offensive line, all seniors. That's a little quick pick, quick pick up there to Quinny once again. So it's going to be second and about five. They had a look shot at the Hornet Hooligans, Corey. Tonight is camo night, camouflage, if you want to call the official way. And I'm sure they're going to get rowdy as this game goes on. Poe connects. I believe he got that one to Sullivan, to Var Sullivan. And that's close to the first down. Let's see where they're going. And the chain gang's on the move, Corey. Sullivan, the 6'1", 175-pound junior with the reception. Again, just taking what the defenders are giving them. They're playing probably five yards off of the wide receivers because they respect the run. Let's see if any adjustments are going to be made. Poe rolls out, gets another one to Sullivan, picks up about four or five into the red zone. And we'll see if defensive coordinator J.C. Todd makes the adjustments with his corners, start playing press coverage, because again, Theodore is a run-heavy team. It looks like Rodgers comes back into the contest. I see him out there lined up. Second and five coming up here. Ball on the 17-yard line. Pogue is on the run. He's just going to keep it for the first down. That's that RPO element we talked about. He gives you another angle rather than just being in the pocket the entire time. Great job of the wide receiver, Ryan Quinney, as well, noticing that his quarterback was past the line of scrimmage, that he needed to provide that blocking down the field and was able to do so. Now we're looking at a first down. It looks like goal-to-goal -goal yeah. situation. I think they're on the right nine. Right at the nine-yard line. I think they're on the nine, Corey. So it's uh, first and goal coming up for Theodore. Cam Johnson lined up in the slot here on the near side. He has some height over his Baker defender. And they go to oh. him. Corey, I called the play, but oh. Pogue threw it behind him. Cam Johnson. Oh, my. God. The mismatch was right there. Not only that, though, we mm. saw that on film one week ago against Sarah Land. The right. same exact play. A Johnson was slant. able to come away with it a week ago, but... Great play call. You just have to squeeze that pigskin until yeah. you see grease coming out of it, and then you're in a good situation. But 439 remaining, second down and goal to go from the nine-yard line. Rodgers being back in the game, having two blockers in front of him, I would love to see him getting to test his health. Sullivan goes in motion. They give it to Rodgers. 
Oh, look at him. Yes. Just barrel cord yes. up to about the two-yard line. What a run by Kirsten Rogers. And he is alone, mm. folks. And that just shows how he's able to bounce back from that ankle injury that he had earlier in the possession. But Kel Britford, the 5'8", 157-pound senior, comes up with the stop. Now it's going to be third down third. and goal to go from the two-yard line of the Hornets. Hornets trying to make a stand right here. Looks like they're going to that, we'll call it the Bobcat offense. Direct snap to Kirsten Rogers. I believe he has stopped, Corb. No, no he's, he's in. in there. He, he's, he's got hard. the ball over. It is a touchdown, two Flag. yards. Flag on the play. Flag on the play thrown in the by end one zone. of the back judges. Let's see I if this will take points off the board or not. Too many men on the field, not quite sure. Yeah, where that flag is have. thrown at. From I that position. My, I see our buddy Randy Kennedy down there about the two-yard line taking notes. Well, they discuss it. So the penalty is against Baker. I think you can assess it on the kickoff as well. So the points will stay on the board. So a two-yard run by Kirsten Rogers. Two yards for number two, who's number one in the Bobcats' hearts. Miguel Frias, there it is. Miguel Frias on for the extra point. That may be offsides there, Cor. It really is uh, one of those unforced errors that you just have to look at the ball and know where it is. Don't go for the hard cam. Yeah. You know, one week ago in week zero, technically, of high school football, some people use the jamboree as a game in week zero. Others use it as a contest to count it. But so the biggest improvement is from week zero to week one. So offsides on Baker. Theodore discussing this. I wonder if they're going to go for two here. They're Coach thinking Collier, about it. Coach Collier has brought the team to the sideline to discuss it. Play clock has just started. You know, if you're at the one-yard line, mm, you I definitely mean, have an opportunity to. You just ran it in two yards out of the Bobcat. That's what we're calling it. Right at the one-and-a-half to so two-yard line. So about the one-and-a-half. So Baker's going to – I mean, I'm sorry, Theodore's going to try to steal this extra point here and just make it two. And Rodgers does it all by himself with some help from that offensive line. And they get two, so it's 14 to eight. Boy, we got a good one right here. 7A Region 1, Theodore and Baker. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It's the 2021 MCPSS Virtual Signature Academy Showcase, October 19th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Register at SignatureAcademyShowcase.vfairs.com. Representatives from all 12 high schools will be on hand to talk about our academies. This event is open to all 7th and 8th graders and their parents. So register today and have your questions answered regarding your child's transition into high school and into a life-changing career path. It's the 2021 MCPSS Virtual Signature Academy Showcase, October 19th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Bishop State Community College, our proud sponsor here of the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. History was made last night on the campus as the volleyball team won their first ever match over Gadsden State. Well, the action continues tomorrow as they have the classic, the Wildcat Classic. Matter of fact, it's going on tonight and tomorrow. They'll be wrapping up. Day one play right now, but tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., it'll be Bishop State starting off at the last game at 3 p.m. So make sure you stop by and check them out for the Wildcat Classic. Bishop State, a great place to start. Well, we've had a great start tonight with this ball game, 14-8 yeah. right now. Yeah, I love the drive right there put together by Theodore. Again, one possession at a time. Coach Collier's team never panicked and got seven points on the board, or eight rather. Jamari Hawkins with that return. Let's see where they're going to spot this ball at, maybe about the 32-yard line. And Landon Larry will lead his crew back on. So, Corey, think about it. This is Baker's third time touching the ball. And on their last series, one play, and they score. Yeah, that was huge for the Hornets quarterback to wide receiver combination. But now they have an opportunity, if you're Theodore, to make the corrections that you need to defensively. But – taking over at their own 27-yard line or the Hornets.
Ball at the 27. And a big run right there for the Baker Hornets. Roderick Taylor. Roderick Taylor, Corey, big run by him. And you move the sticks, and that's what's important if you're Baker. Close to the midfield stripe. Hand off back to Taylor once again. Theodore Bobcats line stiffens up. Picks up about a couple. It'll be second and seven coming up here. For Baker. Ball on the 48 yard line. Though jet sweep action, Jamari Hawkins, and that is stopped right there at the line of scrimmage. It's going to make it third and seven here coming up for the Baker Hornets, a long seven as a matter of fact. Baker and Theodore have bet 55 times, and Theodore has dominated this series 46 to 8 to 1. So the PA announcers calling it third and eight here for Baker as they look to the sidelines for the call from offensive coordinator Chase Calcagney. He comes over from the University of South Alabama, was a GA grad assistant under Pete Bennett, who was the offensive coordinator, but he left earlier this summer, took a job with the University of Memphis, and Calcagney joins the Hornets. Calls up a nice play right there as Jamari Hawkins hauls it in. No flags on the play but they say this may be incomplete. Let's take a look at the replay. Nice pass by Larry, does throw it off his back foot, but I believe Hawkins may have been out of bounds. So it is gonna be fourth down here, coming up for the Hornets. They'll be punting it away. Hunter Eubanks on to punt as Raheem Quinney will go back to about the 20 yard line. Nice hang time from Eubanks punt. As Quinney caught fair, catches it right at the 20. Coming up between quarters, we're gonna be talking with the principal Baker High School. So stay close there, the shot of Buzz right there. The mascot for the Baker Hornets. Great crowd tonight here at Clem Richardson Stadium. We do appreciate you joining us for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week brought to you by Bishop State Community College. Two minutes, 10 seconds remain in the first quarter. Having some issues with my partner's headset, so we'll try to get that taken care of. First and 10 right here coming up for Theodore. Ball on the 21 yard line. Quick pass out to Kirsten Rogers. He is upended. Kel Britford on the tackle as he comes up from his cornerback position. No gain on the play. It's second and 10 here for the Bobcats. As they started this drive on their own 21 yard line. Hogue dumps it out to Quinney. He picks up a couple, maybe four or five. Decision time here. Which player are you gonna call? Justin Ridgeway, the offensive coordinator. They've been in some situations tonight. They've gotten out of a few, so it's gonna be third and four here. Maybe we'll call it third and five. Ball sitting on the 27 yard line of Theodore. And the clock's ticking as we approach 60 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Play clock down to five seconds. Pogue trying to get this snap off. 
just at the last minute, they hand it off to Kirsten Rogers, and he pulls forward for a first down and a bit more, and the chains are gonna move. We said Rogers is the workhorse for the Theodore Bobcats. Play action. Is that pass complete? Yes, it is. Raheem Quinney hauls it in. Great first down call right there from Justin Ridgeway. About a seven or eight yard gain for the Bobcats as they are keeping this drive going. They don't even have to snap it as we are under 10 seconds here in the ball game. I'm sorry, in the first quarter. They do snap it. Pogue unleashes. Cannot connect with Quinney. Point six seconds remain in the quarter. And it is third and short. They tried to catch Baker sleeping there. Poden necessarily did not have to snap the ball, but they called a play. So they will have to run at least one. That was a dead ball stop. So .6 seconds remain. Third and about two coming up for the Bobcats as Demetrius Poe gets the call from the sideline. Looks back to Rogers. Play clock under five seconds. Play action, there's that RPO. Poe could be stopped, but he squeezes through just past the first down sticks. The line to make was the 34. So he picks up the first down, and at the end of one, it is Baker 14 and Theodore eight. I think we're getting ready to take it down to the sidelines and talk with Principal Jason Peru here at Baker High School. Mr. Peru, can you hear us? I'm good, good, just John Peru, not Jason. I'm sorry, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Mr. Peru. No, oh, I had Jason in my head, but John Peru, Principal here at Baker High School. Mr. Peru, I know you're excited about uh, the scoreboard right now. You guys up 14-8. Yeah, we are still a lot, of, a lot of time left, a lot of ball game left. We've got to keep playing hard. The kids are come out tonight, had a good showing. Coach Norman's doing a great job. I had a good week last week. Uh, just got to keep playing. Got to keep playing. Yeah, big win last week over UMS Wright. And you got your hooligans out tonight. It looked like it's camo night. You got a good crowd as well. Let's yeah. talk about school so far. How has it been going here at Baker High School for you? Well, it's been fantastic. People ask you, you know, what's the best part of a high school is those kids right there. Everybody in those stands, it's great right. to see them out. They're happy to be back in school. We're happy to have them. Now, while you're here, Mr. Peru, tell us about what you offer here at Baker High School. The parents are interested in having their kids uh, come here. What type of academies? What do you offer here at Baker High School? We are the premier AP school in Mobile County. Uh, this past year, we had 72 AP scholars, and we offer over 20 AP classes here at Baker High School. So if you're interested in being an AP scholar and making a, a very high ACT score, you need to come to Baker High School. Now, Mr. Peru, we know you're the largest school here in Mobile County. Now, yes. what, what's the rumor? Are you number two in the state? You're number one. Where do you rank right now? We're either two or three. Sometimes <laughs> okay. we trade places with Auburn, but as of today, we had 2,520 students. How do you guys function daily like that? Oh, my goodness. Well, it's something to see. Once you get them in the building, you get them here, you can't tell. Uh, the biggest thing is that uh, dismissal when we have around 70, 80 buses come on campus. Uh, I've seen those buses. My, my twins attend uh, O'Rourke, so I call that the, uh, the the bus parade as they come down. That's right. <laughs> you, get, you get stuck on the, those buses, the airport, oh, you're going to be a minute. Yeah, you're going to be a minute there on Air Terminal Drive. All right, Mr. Peru, we appreciate you stopping by, and good luck tonight for the rest of the ball game. Okay? Hey, we appreciate you all being here, guys. Thank you for what you all do for right. high school athletics. There it is, Mr. John Peru, principal here at Baker High School. We are in the second quarter, 11.58 remaining. Had a penalty on the play there. Pushing Theodore back, so it's going to be first and about 15 here coming up for the Bobcats as this drive has now moved back to the 41-yard line. Poe rolling out. And they roll that one back a little screen. I believe that's a live ball. It could be a fumble. Let's see what the call is, or was he down? Let's see. Alan Duhon signals it is second down. So ruled down on the play, Braden Jenkins. 
So it's going to be second and 18. Let's take a look at that replay. I think they have a partner's headset back together. Ball does come back out, but Jenkins reclaims possession as he takes it back. Oh, and that pass thrown behind Cam Johnson. I can't say it was behind. Johnson was surprised, Corey. It really was. It he was, was a surprised. quick read yep. by Pogue in that situation. And if he turns around, Johnson turns around, he probably is able to catch that and make some moves with it. But the play before, great job of Baker's defense staying home. Now it's going to bring up third down and 18 yards to go from the Bobcat 37-yard line. Yeah, Pogue hits Johnson. I guess he called him. I'm going to hit you on the hot route, but Johnson wasn't ready to <laughs> – Bring it in right there. Pogue throws that one too high for Cam. I'm sorry, that's for uh, Tavares Sullivan. Too high for him. He can't bring it down. And that drive has stalled for the Bobcats. They were doing so well on the drive, but then started going backwards after that penalty. But you'll be able to flip the field right here with a clean snap and a clean toe to leather for the Bobcats. We saw them have trouble with that earlier. So it's going to be imperative that they get off a good kick here by Frias. Miguel Frias on the punt. End over end, and boy, it takes a funny wobble. Javen Williams stays away from it, and Will James and the crew, they down it near the 25-yard line as the Hornets will come back on the field, their first possession here in the second quarter. Great job of flipping the field with your feet. You weren't able to go ahead and get anything sustained offensively, but you definitely were able to do what you needed to do from a punting and flipping the field situation. Now the Baker offense comes back on the field, looking to go ahead and capitalize within the short field and the long strike ability that they've had early in the first quarter. First and 10 ball on the 24 yard line. Corey, I'm not one to play my lucky lotto numbers, but we've called first and 10 from the 24 a lot tonight. Just gonna put that out there as Landon Larry is sacked. They're just gonna say his progress has stopped. That's a big loss right there. Great pressure by this Theodore defense. And looks like Sherman Elston, 5'11", 175 pound senior coming up to make a stop mm. on the play. but. I don't know if we're able to get a replay up to show exactly why the pressure and where the pressure came from, but it's going to bring up seven, second down and 17 yards to go from the 16-yard line of the Hornets. It says the 16. The angle looks like it's more like the 17. Of course, but it was a seven, eight-yard loss. Hawkins goes in motion. Landon Larry just going to keep it, and he's close to the original line of scrimmage. So we'll call that either third and 10 or third and 11 here coming up for the Baker Hornets. Damian Mooney, the 6'1", 210-pound defensive lineman, makes the stop for the Bobcat defense. Third down and 10 yards to go. Offensive coordinator Chase Cal Cagney, Cal in his Cagney. first year as offensive coordinator, came from South Alabama, has a huge play call right here on third down and 10 for his Baker Hornets. A lot of action is taking place on that side of the field tonight, Corey. As Theodore had a couple drives started at the 24-yard line. Hawkins in the slot. Landon Larry targeting him, and that pass is picked off. Picked off by Landon Collier. That is Coach Eric Collier's son. Interception at the 940 mark. And it doesn't get any bigger for a head coach to see his son step underneath the football, drop back, great defensive coverage. Never saw him. Collier, 5'8", 195-pound junior from his inside linebacker position, comes away with a huge takeaway for this Bobcat offense. Now, big we one. saw them give a big dose of Kirsten Rogers on the last offensive possession uh, that they did score on. 18, excuse me, 14 to eight our score. I would like to see a lot of motion and going right back to Rogers here on this drive. Ball sitting square on the 30 yard line. Pole going for it oh, yes. and trying to go up top. But he carried the receiver out of bounds, so incomplete as he tried to get that out to Tavares Sullivan. The young cornerback, Kel Britford, excuse me, the cornerback, 5'8", 157-pound senior in coverage, does a great job making sure that the Bobcat offense on one-on-one -on -one coverage is not able to come away with that. And that's just a perfectly placed football and 
it's mano a mano out there on that island and no place to hide. But <laughs> Pogue does a great job of putting that pass on the money. Theodore taking their time. Play clock under 10 as they get the call from Cal Cagney. I'm sorry. Justin Ridgeway, Theodore has the ball, and they give it to the man, the bruiser, Kirsten Rogers. He picks up about seven, maybe eight on that carry, third and short here coming up for Theodore. Quincy Horn, the 5'8", 165-pound junior on the stop. Tempo, Tempo now for the Bobcats. Tempo. The little Bobcat action right there, Corey. Poe trying to push. I believe he has enough to move the sticks. And Theodore is inside the red zone. And that was right down at third down and four yards to go. And Great call by offensive coordinator Justin Ridgeway, trusting that senior offensive line to get the needed yardage, and also quickly jumping in tempo, That's right. That's right. not allowing Baker to set up defensively and what they wanted to line up in. Now, down and distance situation here, right here at the 19 yard line in the red zone area of the Hornets. Ryan Quinney right there, playing his H back slot. Pogue tosses it. Oh, fumble, fumble, That's a live fumble. ball. That's a live ball, Corey. Did they say it was a pass? I don't know. I if thought the that under was a toss. If he underhanded it, it was definitely a pass forward, but I thought it was like wow. an option. I thought it was an option, too. I thought that was and a live ball. let's take a look. If he goes, it's a pitch. And that's that's backwards. That's a pitch. That That is a live football. And now we do have instant replay, if I'm, if I'm correct. Baker, they bought the instant replay a couple of years ago. I don't see any red flags by uh, Coach Norman so far. Kirsten Rogers just trying to twist and do what he can pick up. Maybe two on that one, a big stiff laid by the Hornets. And as the game wears on, Rogers is going to start feeling those licks because, again, he had that ginger ankle. And I know the Bobcats are able to give this young man the football. He's going to keep requesting it because he's just that dude. He's that football player for the Bobcats. Third and long here. Pogue decides to keep it, can't find anyone, and he's going to take it up the gut. 17 yards, no flag. There is one flag I do see, Corey, one flag at about the 10-yard line. Let's right see if it will stand. Of holding, right in the area of holding, but nonetheless, the quarterback did not see anyone else open, decided to carry it himself. Great decision by the quarterback. That's the, that's that, down the field that's that element of run pass option. Coach Carl, you talked about that he can extend drive, extend plays, give the Bobcats another chance. So the discussion has taken place. Score is good. So, okay, personal foul. So 17 yard touchdown run for Demetrius Pope. Well, you know, when you look at the scoreboard, 14 to zero, the Bobcats did not panic, just took one possession at a time, was shell-shocked by that short field position right. early for Baker and the long pass, but since then have automatically, if they make this extra point here, scored 15 unanswered within the last eight minutes of this contest. And boy, that two-point conversion comes into play right here. Looks like a timeout has been called Prius gets that football stuck in the tree. Man, behind he the booted it. Post. It never even came ba down. Baker called out a timeout. I think someone may have to climb the tree. The young man's climbing the fence right now, Corey. He may need some adult supervision to go get that one. I, I mean, but wow. that's what you want to do. You want to put through the uprights, and you give yourself an opportunity. But that is huge for this Theodore offense to respond the way it has. Make sure you mark your calendar. Mark your calendar. September 6th, that is Labor Day. All schools and offices will be closed for the Mobile County Public School System. So don't forget, September 6th, Labor Day coming up. All schools and offices will be closed. So as we go back and talk about it, Corey, how big was that two-point conversion that Theodore had the opportunity to convert on because a penalty occurred on the PAT and with Baker having that penalty, I believe it was offsides. And Coach Collier brought the kids over, and they discussed it. And Rodgers had just scored on the two-yard run, so they were about with the one and a half, and they went right back to him. And look how much, 
how big that two-point conversion comes back right now. You know, we're at 14 apiece officially right here. He kicks this extra point. I think, uh, 15. I'm sorry to cut you off. I think Coach Norman called that timeout. He wanted to probably discuss that the play before where the pitch happened, and we all said that's a live ball. <laughs> I, I think it really was a live I think it was a live ball. Because, again, that's just like an option. And any time the ball is behind and the line of scrimmage, right. to me, no overhand motion. It, it did was, not go forward either. To me, when you pitch the ball, that is a live football and a lateral because it, it either goes laterally or behind the line of scrimmage, one of the two. But any time you pitch the ball, unless it's underhanded, that's considered a throw. But as we stand, we're at 14 apiece, extra point pending. There's a kick from Frias, and it is good. So Theodore now on top, 15 to 14. We're going to come back with more action. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week, brought to you by Bishop State. My name is Harshini. I'm a junior at Davidson High School, and after graduation, I plan on pursuing a career in dermatology. Currently, I'm taking science classes such as AP Chemistry, Biology, and Human Anatomy, which will help me pursue my career. I feel as though Mobile County is preparing me for my career choice in that they provide rigorous classes that help me think further beyond just what I'm learning. I'm Parshini Cannon, a junior at Davidson High School, and I'm learning today so I can be a leader tomorrow. Did you know Bishop State Community College has a location in Theodore? It's located on Highway 90 behind Hardy's. They're offering evening classes for your convenience. Classes this semester will begin the day after Labor Day and end before Thanksgiving. That means you'll be finished with classes before the holidays. Registration is open now, so visit bishop.edu and follow the steps under New Students tab. And right here, they took the penalty on the kickoff. 25 yards is where they're kicking from, the Theodore Bobcats. And that was a great drive. 17-yard touchdown, six plays, 30-yard touchdown. Took up eight minutes. No, it was at the 8.03 mark here in the second quarter. So that was a big-time drive by the Bobcats. Yeah, 30-yard drive there, 17-yard run by Pogue. Frias kicks it off, goes out of bounds. I'm waiting for the flag, and there it is. <laughs> the official just simply walked up and dropped it, Corey. Yeah, right where the ball went out of bounds is where it was thrown. So let's see what, what Baker, decides Baker decides to do with to do it. Here. Steve Norman's talking to the side judge about what he wants to do with it, whether to play. Or have him have a kick it again. I believe they're going to force him to kick it again. And that's what Coach Norman is talking mm -hmm. to about. He's talking to so Wayne now Simon. The, now he's at the 20. On the sidelines, Mr. Simon doing an outstanding job tonight. Baker jumped out early, took a 14-0 lead over Theodore, and Theodore has come back in the second quarter here and scored to get back on the board. Scored one late in the first quarter and just scored again. Now on top 15 to 14, Al Weed and Corley Bounty having a good time tonight inside of the Hornets' Nest. They call it Clem Richardson Stadium. That's the official name, Corey. Clem Richardson, former coach, former principal. Right. Really uh, a staple in this Baker Hornet community. All right, Frias boots this one right up the middle. Hawkins going to catch it on the – well, I'm sorry, I spoke too soon. Now he catches it on the bounce. Comes to the near side at the 30, cuts back. And still has those legs churning and going, Corey. We talk about that every season. Keep the legs going. So Hawkins brings that one close to the 39-yard line. Got to thank our folks at Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs, save more lives. A portion of subs purchased at Firehouse will go to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation, helping to provide life-saving equipment to first responders. So thanks to Jim and Susie Sherman at the Greenlight Road location of Firehouse Subs for taking care of us and the crew tonight. Also, BSN Sports, where you can get team apparel and equipment. If it's sports-related and you need it, BSN Sports has it. They are the heart of the game. Visit them online at BSN Sports. Com. See how Baker responds right here. You have Flowers back in at quarterback, and he takes over right at the 40-yard line of the Hornets. 
going with that Wildcat formation that they use when they bring Flowers in, and he runs into a stiff Bobcat defensive line. I think, think he'll get credit for about one and a half, maybe two yards. Yeah, Flowers with tough yardage pushing forward. Damon Jones, the inside linebacker, 5'11", 195-pound junior with the stop. Have a young man down there for Theodore. We talk about these two schools. Just talk to uh, Mr. Peru, principal, as we know it's the largest school in Mobile County. Baker dresses out about 87 players. They have 26 seniors returning five on offense, three on defense. Corey, this is one of those ball games where we receive a roster and we like to call it, it's tough work for us because they have a lot of double numbers on the, on the, on the team here at Baker High School. Yeah, you just have to make sure you check with the coaches before right. the game and confirm that offense for defense and some of the double numbers play the same position. And because of it, we just like to do our homework here. And we take pride in doing our homework and preparing oh, yeah. for these games. And just like to see this young man, this big fella, get up and you're able to pick out the number. That's the big defensive nose tackle. Sure is. 6'1", 295 mm. pound junior, Jordan Bolden, up and walking off on his own power. You Good love to, to see, see that. that. Good to see that. I'm sure we will probably see him again later in the contest. 7.35 here remaining in the half. The hooligans kind of quiet right now, Corey. Theodore has come back and silenced the hooligans. And that's what you have to do if you're Theodore. That was on my checklist. You want to control the crowd. And how do you do that? By scoring 15 unanswered points here as we're at 735 remaining in the second quarter of action with Theodore leading 15 to 14. Second and seven. Flowers out of that Wildcat just going to keep it. Has enough for the first down. The ball comes out, but I believe he is down at the 45. Flowers 6'2", 208 pounds sophomore. You see how high he runs. You're not gonna be able to tackle this young man up high. You're gonna have to hit him low because this young man has a lot of power at 6'2", moving north to south, moves the chains for the Baker Hornets, gets into Bobcat territory at their own 45 yard line. Trip to the right for the Hornets, two to the left. Empty set, it's wide open for Flowers to take it up the gut. Man, that's about an eight or a nine yard run. Good run by Josh Flowers. That's one of the things when you go to this no back formation and you get a hat on hat up front against this 3-4 defense, you're able to get into that second level of the defense and Flowers does a wonderful job. I think he had close to 95 yards rushing a week ago against the UMS Wright Bulldogs. Second down right. and two yards to go now for Baker right at the 37 yard line of the Bobcats. Jet sweep action coming up here for the Hornets as they get that one for the first down, Shondre Young Jr. He takes it to about the 25. Off that jet sweep, they pick up the first down and the chain gang is on the move again. Young Junior, the 5'7", 153 pound senior speedster is able to get around that end and that's all you could ask for, especially in a short yarded situation. They're gonna observe the heat timeout there right here, Al. With 6'14 remaining in the second quarter, the Bobcats leading 15 to 14. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. It's the 2021 MCPSS Virtual Signature Academy Showcase, October 19th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Register at SignatureAcademyShowcase.vfairs.com. Representatives from all 12 high schools will be on hand to talk about our academies. This event is open to all 7th and 8th graders and their parents. So register today and have your questions answered regarding your child's transition into high school and into a life-changing career path. It's the 2021 MCPSS Virtual Signature Academy Showcase, October 19th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. 
Josh Flowers dumps it off to Jamari Hawkins, and he takes it inside of the scoring zone. Ball at about the seven, I mean, maybe eight yard line, Corey. Nice play right there from Flowers to Hawkins. And that's exactly what you want to do if you're Baker. At first and 10 from the 25, you roll your quarterback out, and you let your playmaker, Hawkins, make a difference. Now it's first down and close to goal to go yep. for the Hornets right at the eight yard line of the Bobcats. Here's Hawkins in motion. We've seen this play before, but not quite with that outcome as Flowers is brought down for a loss. That's what you needed to see from this Theodore defense. Just a little bit of momentum. Ryan Quinney, the young man who plays both ways sure for does. the Theodore Bobcats. This time from his defensive end position, again, 235 pounds senior, just is able to go ahead and get the feet from underneath flowers, and he picked that flower. <laughs> Something uh, I wonder if uh, Coach Cal Cagney has seen here for the Baker offense as they have switched to flowers for this possession. They're gonna call a timeout, and we can talk about it a little farther. Uh, Landon Larry's pretty much started the game. We know they brought in Flowers to get that early score in the ball game, Corey, but on this drive, they started a good good way back, but they've stuck with Flowers the whole time. But, you know, it's kind of about feel. It's kind of what you take what the defense gives you. Yeah. And both quarterbacks, they say if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. I disagree because what it does, it brings a different dimension to the game. Flowers is able to keep the football in his hands. He gives you a little bit of RPO action. We yeah, haven't sure really does. seen him throw pass, drop back and throw a deep pass. But again, Landon Larry threw that 65-yard strike. Beautiful to Javen Williams Beautiful early in the pass. first quarter, right on the money. So you know he has the ability to, so two quarterbacks, you're able to learn from one another, encourage one another. That's what you love to see if you're part of the Hornet Nation. 4.59 remaining, a great game. We knew it would be here early in Absolutely. 7A Region 1. So it's second and goal, but the ball is on the 12 yard line. Baker cannot pick up a first down. So they have to score or ball over on downs. A lot of personnel coming in after that timeout, core Look a little unorganized with this formation here. Busted play. Yeah, that's what it looks like. But they pick up a couple. They get it back to about the seven or eight yard line, the original line of scrimmage. So it's gonna be third and goal from the eight coming up here for Baker. A lot of shifting, a lot of movement. Yeah. Whether it was by design or not, you look at Flowers turn around and he didn't have a running back that was going in the same direction as him. And we have a big old lineman down for Baker. I think that maybe Sawyer Colvin. No, gets it says 75. Yeah, he gets, 75. gets popped from behind. That's Elijah Miller, the left yeah, guard, 5'7", 311 pound senior. Just gets rolled up on from behind after the play and it's still gonna bring up third down and eight yards to go. That's one of the linemen's worst nightmares that as you're trying to push the pile forward, someone comes from behind you and undercuts you and really takes the feet out from under you and you hope this young man is able to get up and walk it off, but that's exactly what happened there, Al. So. He got hit from behind. We talked about it earlier. Baker's lost four straight games against Theodore. The last time they lost five in a row was doing a 20-game losing streak from 1996 to 2005, Corey. So they're trying to uh, get that win tonight. And last year, Theodore beat them 35 to 20. So there's Miller coming off the sidelines right there. Mobile County Public Schools would like to recognize our learning leading community partners. Thank you to the Barton Academy Foundation for raising $14 million to renovate the interior of Alabama's oldest and now newest public school, the Barton Academy for Advanced World Studies. Your community support is greatly appreciated. All right, here it is, third and goal, ball on the eight yard line. Flowers kind of tosses it 
to Jamari Hawkins. Now, Corey, that definitely was a forward pass. Yeah. That's incomplete. And, and again, if you know where I'm going with that. Exactly. <laughs> you'll, you'll take the breaks if you are Theodore early in the contest when we thought was a fumble earlier led to a couple of plays later being a touchdown right. for the Bobcats. But now fourth down and eight, the kicker comes in Hunter for Kilgore. the Baker Hornets. Mm -hmm. Kilgore going to place this one right about the 15-yard line, so this will be a 25-yarder. And he converted on a couple of last week against sure UMS. Did. Made two of them. Has the angle here. And Kilgore puts it through. So Baker regains the lead. 17 to 15. Boy, we've got a good one here. 418 remaining in the half. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It was just like an extension of home. Bishop give you that outlet to give you a career, a successful career. We're doing some great things at Bishop State. Keep an eye on us. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Al Whedon, Corley Bounty down in the truck. Wade Ford, Quentin Howard, and our engineer, Mr. Fran Conway, 25-yard field goal by Hunter Kilgore to extend the lead 17 to 15. Baker on top of Theodore. Yeah, that was a big time kick. Special teams always effective, but you look at that drive by the Baker Hornets. Nine plays, and that probably took almost two and a half to three minutes off the clock. So that's important answering the bell. Sure was for Baker in the situation to where Theodore had scored 15 unanswered points now. Now Baker takes the lead back 17 to 15 with 418 remaining here in the second quarter. And what was real huge about that drive course, 76 yards, they took time off the clock, but they got some points out of it. Something they did last week against UMS Wright, where they ran off about 10 minutes, never got any points. Just held time uh -oh. of possession. Will James. Uh -oh, oh, and oh, fumble, oh, and it fumbles. He fumbles, and it goes into to the hand to his teammate, Braden Jenkins. Oh, my goodness. That Mama, is, did you see that man? That is a true Bobcat wow. bounce Look in at your that. favor. And, again, that was close to 60, no, 75 yards on the return. Will James does a lot of the work, but look his teammate, that. Johnny on the spot. You That's look at right. Will James, cut back, whoop. He slips and falls here at the last moment. A great knockaway, almost a takeaway, and it goes right, right into his hands as Braden Jenkins is Johnny on Johnny the spot. On the spot Corey. And he gets a quick six for the Theodore Bobcats, point after Pendy. If we can get that replay from up top, that would be great. Frias boots it through. And now Theodore on top, 22 to 17. If we if, if they can pull up the replay up top, we would love to see how. Here it is, Corey. And I want to see that was close. Right about right the, the 16, 17, 16 yep. 17 yard line. We'll say 16. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Wow. And who's going to ultimately get credit for it? It's not going to be Will James. No. It's going to go ahead and be Braden Jenkins because he's the one who finishes it in. But you take the ball close to 60 yards. We took it to 16. Will That's James, about an 84-yard touchdown. Now. 84 yards. Wow. We'll give him credit for on that touchdown return. And I don't know if we can bring it up one more time so wow. we can try to guesstimate whether it was 16 yards or 17 yards where James went ahead and fielded that kickoff. But you want to talk about answering the bell. The Bobcats not only answered the bell and the scoring drive by the Baker Hornets, but were also able to come away. And we're, let's see, the kickoff comes right at the 40-yard line. We had that overhead shot. The top shot is what we were looking for up from, from the press box. And roll it, back and a roll it just a little bit more. We'll take a look to see where he actually filmed, fielded it from. And it's right around the 15 or 16-yard line 
where he fielded the football from you know, initially when he back, caught it. Charles is going to take it back a little farther, but uh, it was like the 16, 17. But, but the key is right here, Corey, as Braden Jenkins never gave up, He's he followed the, the play. Right. And was Johnny on the spot. He really was. I mean, wow. Now, again, 22 to 17, our score with 404 remaining. Not even 40 seconds of play clock elapsed before we had our next scoring possession. Well, Coach Collier told me they must reduce the turnovers, eliminate penalties, and execute well. And they've tried to do a combination of those things tonight to try to get the win. And, Corey, I mean, when I say we have a good one, we have a good one. That's somebody's play of the week. I, and I would like to see I mean, if you can, other stations. We can get that one on a, but, with but the that ESPN. Is, man, oh, man, that, that is was somebody's nice. play of the week to where Johnny wow. on the spot and hit him in stride, almost like it was a pass. I mean, he just didn't even break stride. Did Braden Jenkins taking that one to the house? And it stuns the fans here at Clem Richardson Stadium. Kel Britford picks it up off of the ground, and he is brought down at about the 20 yard line. Momentum. I mean, this Got is an injured a great uh, game. Bobcat there after the play, getting up real slow. And finally makes it up. Is that Ryan Quinn? Big time play, though. I mean, big this is what play. you expect in this heavyweight, what you call big boy football, 7A Region 1 That's right. contest, 22 to 17, our score. Baker jumps out quickly to a 14 to 0 lead. Theodore bounces back, scores 15 unanswered. Baker kicks the field goal, and right after the field goal, ensuing the kickoff goes some 84 yards to the house. First to 10 from the 19. As Baker hands it off to Roderick Taylor. We haven't called his name in a while. We've had a lot of other names being called. He picks up two or three. I'm sure Coach Norman wants to get some type of points out of this drive because the way this ball game is going, if you miss out on an opportunity, you could be cutting yourself short later in the ball game. So every possession is critical from here on out. Landon Collier, who already has one interception so far in tonight's contest from his inside linebacker position, making the stop. But Landon Laird, like you mentioned, back in at quarterback for Baker, trying to get them sparked. Quick out to Jamari Hawkins. I don't. I think that's incomplete, Corey. He never yes. had possession of the ball. Great job of the officials being right on top of that one. Right. But it was a jarring hit as the helmet to the football caused Landon Larry's pass to be incomplete. R almost a Ooh. lateral, but what a stick by the defensive back, Jordan Casher, the six-foot, 175-pound junior. So Coach Collier calls timeout. Now, now they're playing. Now the chess match has started, Corey. It's and second down. No, I believe it. Will this be third down? We saw third down and seven this be is third what down it will coming be. up. Yep. So Coach Collier calls timeout. And what he's looking for, Collier wants to talk to the officials on the far sidelines yeah, about that there. being a lateral and it being a fumble. So he's discussing that one also. Got to thank Jim and Susie Sherman over there at Firehouse Subs for taking care of us with the East tonight, as they always do. We appreciate having them on board here for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. So make sure you stop by and see them. Also, Bishop State Community College, don't forget, late start and mini term two registration will be coming up real soon. We want you to get registered, so stop by the website, bishop.edu. And lastly, BSN Sports, where you can get team apparel, equipment, from baseball to wrestling, whatever you need, all sports in between. BSN Sports has you covered. They are the heart of the game. Visit them online, bsnsports.com. Well, to me, if we're able to look at that replay one more time, it looked like it was a lateral. Went straight down the line of scrimmage. That's what Eric Collier is talking to the officials at. We have that great look right there, That's and it was pass. right down the line of scrimmage. I Had to be forward a forward pass. pass. That, was that was covered up pass. by Theodore. And again, mm. that's a break for Baker, but sometimes that's the kind of break you need. Third down and close to seven yards to go from their own 22 for the Hornets. But you can't fault Coach Collier for that, stopping the clock and airing it out. And speaking of airing it out, that pass to Javen Williams. I don't see a flag, Corey. I thought that may have been P.I., but no flag on the play. I'm sorry, rather a hold. But Javen Williams trying to dig the grass out of his face mask and mouthpiece. Yeah, there was a lot of touching going on. I'll say that, Corey. He dove out for the mm. football and extended himself as much as he could. We saw this young man score 
a 65-yard touchdown earlier in the contest. Right. And just that time, Landon Larry was not able to hook up with them, but I applaud the effort right there by Javen Williams trying to get that football. Going to bring up fourth down now, seven yards to go for the Hornets as they're going to try to flip the field, trying to get a good bounce end over end on this punt. Punt almost, I believe it was tipped. The punt from Hunter Eubanks, I believe it was tipped, Corey. A lot of pressure. I, I, if it wasn't tipped, the pressure but it caused shanked him to off. shank it to the right. And Eric Collier over there talking to the far official, <laughs> just making sure everybody's on the same page and knowing why he called that timeout earlier, trying to sell himself the call. But his team has the football leading 22 to 17 on the Baker side of the field. And the biggest thing for this Hornet defense right here is to come away with a stop. Get a little momentum it is. going into halftime with some type of stop or turnover. If you're Theodore, if you're able to score here, you definitely have Uncle Mo not only knocking at the door, but he's sitting in your locker room too with you at halftime. First 10 from the 33. Kirsten Rogers trying to regain his footing, and boy does he as he runs it into the red zone for the Theodore Bobcats. Big run right there by Kirsten Rogers. Yes, I mean, you go to your workhorse. Young man is just an absolute stud, Al, as he had that ankle injury early in the first possession sure of the is. football game. Bounced back and has now run from the Bobcat position, from his running back position, trying to do it all for Theodore. Direct snap to Pogue as he gets past the five-yard line. Second and about six coming up, maybe seven. Theodore can pick up a first down without having to score. Coach Norman and the Bobcats could not get anything out of that last possession. The Bobcats defense stood tall. Andre Palmore will give him credit for about two or three maybe. It's going to be third and about maybe two or three yards coming up here for the Bobcats. And Kirsten Rogers comes back into the ball game. They give it back to Rogers, third and three. Does he have enough to get the first down? He is close, Corey. Let's see where they're going to spot this ball at. It will come down to the spot. And they have not moved the, ch well, will we get our first measurement of the season? Well, Alan Duhon. I think they're gonna bring the sticks out, Corey. So this is our first measurement of the season here. Yeah, I mean, you're in, goal to goal situation, you definitely want to go ahead and bring up the sticks because it's close enough to measure. If the first down is not gained, it'll bring fourth down and one yard to go right from the three yard line. And we saw them go for it earlier and it is going to be a fourth in inches for the Bobcats. And we did see them go for it on fourth down earlier. So this will be their second fourth down conversion if they decide to go for it. Right here inside this red zone area. But when you have all senior offensive linemen to start the contest, you definitely probably want to run behind that big beef. And that's what we're going to see. I just want to see if we're going to go with Rodgers lined up in the Bobcat formation <laughs> or we're going to go under center with your quarterback pole trying to sneak it for one yard. But you cannot jump off sides to kill any momentum here at fourth down and one yard to go on the three-yard line. We've seen Rogers score with it from two yards out and convert a two-point try as well. Fourth and inches coming up here for the Bobcats. Let's see the personnel they're bringing on the field. I see Pogue, and I see Rogers as well. And they're going on the center with Ryan Quinney behind them. And they're just going to push the quarterback flags. forward and a flag on the play. That's what you didn't want to see. You didn't want to see flags if you're Theodore, especially if it's against you 
False start. From three yards out. Yep, false start mm -hmm. on the offense. Someone got a little excited, Corey. That, that was a good play call, too. That will drive head coach Eric Collier bananas mm. and offensive coordinator Justin Ridgeway because you know what the snap count is. You know what the formation is. You just have to do your job in that situation right. deep in the red zone. So now you back it up to fourth down and six. It changes your play call if you're the Theodore Bobcats and forces them to attempt a field goal right here. Going to bring on uh, Miguel Frias as he's going to try to boot him a 25-yarder, Corey. Don't want to get this blocked if you're Theodore. Great protection needed up front. See the Bobcat band, and is that offside? It's a hard count. Baker, oh. Right back to fourth down that and can one. can hurt. Yeah, I mean, that's So huge. you're back in the same scenario here for Theodore. Don't know if that was by design mm. uh, to get the hard count, but this is a game of chess, not checkers. Oh, yeah, the chess is definitely going on right now. Because on the previous play where Theodore was false start, they definitely had the right formation, Corey, as we look at the Yeti right there in this camo. Well, maybe not a Yeti, but definitely a good outfit to go deer hunting. But on that previous play for Theodore, they had Kirsten Rogers, they had Ryan Quinney back there. They had the big the big guys to push Pogue across the line. They had the right play call. They did. J.C. Todd, the well, he is out on the field. Man. for the Baker defensive squad, wants to talk to the officials to get clarification on exactly what the call was against his defensive team. And that's all you need to be able to have that explanation so yeah. you can explain to your players what they did wrong. And that's important right here before the half because, again, it goes back from fourth down and six and a 25-yard field goal attempt to now you're at fourth down and one yard to go from the four-yard line of the Baker Hornets. And we saw the big play that was called when the penalty was called against right. Theodore. They had to back up five yards. Next week, we're going to return back to Clem Richardson Stadium. What? What do you mean? Well, Davidson, they're playing their home games here inside of the Hornets' nest this season. So it's Murphy versus Davidson, another 7A Region 1 battle, Corey. So we'll uh, bring it back right here for some more excitement next Friday night for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Now, Coach Steve Norman on the field discussing things with Alan Duhon as well. Yeah, I love the Hornet hooligans Man. Uh, making some noise as the cheerleaders are holding up. Make some noise, Hornet hooligans fans, as you're looking at a fourth down and one yard to go. The same formation right. that we saw the penalty called against Theodore earlier. Now, you must know what the snap count is. Right. You can't jump early. You just have to show a lot of discipline here if you're Theodore and get what you want out of it. So you have Palmore. Direct snap to Kirsten Rogers that he runs behind Ryan Quinney, the big tight end. And that's a touchdown as one of the Hornets lose their helmet in the end zone. Corey, he's just running behind extra beef right there. You that, cannot, that, that's easy. You cannot go wrong with that big Bobcat offensive line. Again, senior left tackle David Wells, senior left guard Kerry Jackson, senior center Ronald Stevenson, right guard who's a senior Evan Kramer, and right tackle senior 300-pounder Caden Johnson paves the way for their running back from four yards out. Touchdown yards. Bobcats. Now Frias on for the extra point. And he boots it through after that four-yard run by Kirsten Rogers. Picks up his second touchdown tonight. What a great first half we have had so far here tonight inside of the Hornets' nest. Theater on top, 29 to 17, Corey. Well, you know, you're talking about going to your workhorse, Rogers, down in the red zone area, and you just took a lot of momentum by scoring right there by the half. It would have gone either way. If Baker would have come away with the stop, you would have saw the Hornet hooligans and Hornet fans make a lot of noise to encourage your team, and it all happened on that weird, weird kickoff bounce to where now Theodore takes a lot of the momentum or able to go ahead and take that here within the last two minutes here in the first half of action. Theodore, you look at the scoreboard now, again, after trailing 14 to zero, now our score 29 to 17 in favor of the Bobcats. Three yard touchdown by Rogers, four play drive. 
didn't take much time off not, of the clock. Not at all. But it's huge for Baker not to turn the ball over right here before the half. Don't give Theodore another opportunity to extend this 12-point lead. What you would like to see if you're Baker, again, is just go ahead, resettle yourself at halftime, make the adjustments that helped you get out to that 14-0 lead. Friaz lining up to kick this one off from the 40. A lot of work being put in tonight by both teams, Corey, and our buddy Charles in the truck. He's going to have a lot of video to try to get together for a highlight reel at halftime for us. Squib kick. Oh, that's a fumble. fumble. Cover Baker, Baker regains it. That could have been huge because anytime oh, the football man. hits the turf and Theodore's in the right position and able to pounce on top of that football, they've already got a, a couple of good bounces tonight that favored them. You That's look right. at this football squib kick, and it does exactly what it needs to do from a kicking standpoint. And if you're Baker, you just want to take care of the football. Great hit, knocking the football away, but Baker able to get on top of that pig skin and save that possession. 46.4 seconds remaining. Now at their own 29-yard line are the Hornets. 46 seconds here. And when I say the, the sail has been taken out of the hooligans, it truly has, as quiet as they can be. Josh Flowers on for another possession. Jet sweep to Jamari Hawkins. He picks up a couple. I think he stayed in bounds. Or did he go out? The clock is stopped. So he must have went out of bounds. Second down and about five coming up here for Baker. And the Hornets, again, don't want to turn the football over. Ball security staying in bounds. If you have a big play, you have the timeouts yeah. available to call. I, I think Baker is actually out of timeouts. The scoreboard the says scoreboard. Theodore has two, but I think Coach Collier has one myself. Second and four. It looks like second and five to me, but it could be home field advantage. Flowers just keeps it, Corey. He can pick up the first down. That'll stop the clock. He's stretching it out, gets up to about the 46 or 47. That'll stop the clock to move the chains. And it looks like I'm looking at Coach Steve Norman. He's looking whether he said he's going to call the timeout to regather the offense with 31 point seconds or allow the clock to run the triple zeros here and regather yourself at halftime. I want to say Theodore kicked off the football first to Baker. So I know Baker case, kicked off to Theodore. Okay, Baker, Baker declined. Baker will get the ball in the second half. That, that's, Remember that's that three and out, that's and correct. then uh, they tried to the punt. Three and out. So that's going to be huge for Baker. Yeah. So I think they're just going to let it run down because Coach Norman is going to get the ball back. He's out of timeouts anyway. So what an interesting first half full of scoring here. Back and forth contest. We started off early, Corey, with scoring as we just talked about it. Theodore received that kickoff, ran three plays, tried to punt to Mitris Pogue, put his knee down, and he was down. And Baker capitalized and got that early score from Josh Flowers on the touchdown but it has been back and forth in these first two quarters. Didn't expect it to be any other way here at Baker High School because you're two heavyweights slugging at one another. Great halftime score. Theodore leads 29 to 17. Speaking of halftime, got bands headed your way. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week brought to you by Bishop State. The more parents are involved in school, the more likely it is a child will succeed. Children with involved parents and attend school regularly make better grades and have better social skills. Every involved parent makes a difference. Get involved. Ask about your child's day. Explain how your education matters. Parent involvement, it matters. You can find more information on parent involvement at mcpss.com. It's the 2021 MCPSS Virtual Signature Academy Showcase, October 19th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Register at SignatureAcademyShowcase.vfairs.com. Representatives from all 12 high schools will be on hand to talk about our academies. This event is open to all 7th and 8th graders and their parents. So register today and have your questions answered regarding your child's transition into high school and into a life-changing career path. It's the 2021 MCPSS Virtual Signature Academy Showcase, October 19th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. At any given time, trauma can happen. And how we deal with it. 
and how we make peace with it. Starts with me. With Project Thrive, I'm taking the pledge. I pledge to believe and support others experiencing trauma. Will you join Project Thrive and its team of partners who are working together to address issues of trauma? Take the pledge, take a stand, and let's make Mobile a trauma-informed community. It was just like an extension of home. Bishop give you the outlet to give you a career, a successful career. We're doing some great things at Bishop State. Keep an eye on us. Welcome back to Clem Richardson Stadium. We are at halftime with Theodore on top, 29-17. Speaking of Theodore, let's take it down to the field and listen to the Theodore Marching Bobcats. Bobcats. We're going to take a break and come back and give you the sounds of the Baker Hornet Marching Band. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It was just like an extension of home. Bishop give you the outlet to give you a career a successful career. We're doing some great things at Bishop State. Keep an eye on us. Hello, I'm Katrina Frazier 
and I'm Deborah Robinson, and we would like to be your next Realtors. As homeowners, we know how confusing it can be searching to find that perfect home that fits your needs and budget. For that reason, it's important to have a reliable partner to represent you and to be there for every step of your home buying process. You'll find the services offered through Berkshire Hathaway, Home Services Cooper & Company Realtors are second to none. So whether you are buying or selling your home, call us today and let our experience work for you. If you look at the numbers, Mobile County Public Schools is making great strides. With more than 53,000 students, 7,000 employees, and 90 schools, we are consistently increasing our four-year graduation rate and our first-class pre-K program. We continue to strive for national recognition and continue to prepare our students for the global workforce. And we do all of this with one goal in mind, to equip and empower college and career-ready graduates. Mobile County Public Schools. We're learning today, leading tomorrow. Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. All right, we're taking it back down to the field. Time to listen to the Baker Marching Hornets. The program includes music from Britain's Spears, Imagine Dragons, and from the animated science fiction sitcom Rick and Morty. Tonight's feature players are Andrew Sanger on trombone and Blaine Dye, Ezekiel Moore, and Eric Johnson on snare drum. Your majors, is your band ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Pride of Baker High School marching band.
And there's the pride of the Baker High School Marching Band. We'll be back and take a look at some stats and also give you some other scores taking place throughout the Mobile County area. You're watching the MCBSS High School Football Game of the Week brought to you by Bishop State. Hello, I'm Renee Phillips, your host of Home Room. Will you join us as we talk with the students, teachers, and staff about all of the great things happening in our schools? That's right, Renee. Not only are we here to keep you informed about the great things happening in our schools, but to also keep you updated on safety issues. Our show, Safe Schools, looks at ways to keep your child and our students safe. Not only are we looking at ways to keep your child and our students safe, but to keep you informed on how to connect with us. Manténgase informado aquí en Conexión a Padres. And we also score big from pre-K to high school with MCPSS Athletics. And then Inside Education puts it all together for you, showing you the ins and outs about news and events taking place across the Mobile County Public School District. We do this to keep you informed. We welcome you back to Clem Richardson Stadium. What a first half we have had. Theater on top of Baker, 29 to 17. Getting ready to take a look at the first half statistics for this ball game. 
Hey, there's my buddy Malachi Howard right there in the shot, Corey, as he's walking up the stands here at the <laughs> Hornets Nest. Big time performance last night at Lab Peebles Stadium gotcha. as Murphy was taking on Foley in another huge 7A Region sure 1 matchup. So uh, we'll get those stats up and take a look at first half Hello. statistics. I'm Renee Phillips. Here they are right there. All right, Renee, hold on, hold on. We got to talk about stats here, Corey. So uh, <laughs> there it is, the breakdown right there. Big look at that rushing yards by Theodore, 124 yards. And that's behind Kirsten Rogers, the big fella who went ahead and is taking over. He's the workhorse for this Theodore Bobcat offense. Wouldn't have it any other way. 65 total passing yards. The balance is there for the Theodore Bobcats. Yeah. The passing yards, they had a 65-yard strike early in the first first quarter as Landon Larry did a wonderful job of finding Javen Williams in stride for that huge 65 yards that accounted for all of that 101 yards passing 65 yards you look at the balance though 189 total yards for Theodore 170 for Baker the one turnover by Baker led to the points off penalties for the Bobcats and it's been a much cleaner second game for both of these teams four plays four penalties excuse me for 30 yards for Theodore Two penalties for 10 yards for Baker. And there's our scoring summary right there. As we talked about it, Corey, in the first quarter and literally after the first series, it was three plays and out for Theodore and literally turned into a great situation for Baker as they punched that ball in from a five-yard touchdown run from Josh Flowers. So you can see our summary so far. But look at Theodore putting up 21 points in the second quarter, Corey. Big and really huge was that last touchdown that they were able to take advantage of that uh, run. I'm sorry, not that last touchdown, but the touchdown before that, the kickoff return touchdown. The, if you want to call it the immaculate reception for uh, the Bobcats from Will James to uh, Braden Jenkins. That was huge, man. Yeah, that was huge. And right before here, you know, before we go to these 4A standings, want to go ahead and give everybody some other scores of entrance here in the Mobile, Baldwin County area. Okay. Alma Bryant leading MGM in another 7A Region 1 matchup, 28-0 right. in the third quarter. Gulf Shores leads Brookwood 28-0. Williamson leads Faith Academy 7-6 in the third quarter. Daphne over Davidson 35-7. Blunt leads Greenville 12 to six in the third quarter. Also other action, Robert Stales blanking Alberta 31 to zero. Hewitt Trustville leads Sarah Land 14 to zero at the half. Couple of more scores, UMS Wright up 24 to zero over Mobile Christian in the third quarter. Centronelle up 20 to seven over Satsuma okay. in the first quarter of action. In the third quarter, the number one, one ranked team in 6A Spanish Fort leads the defending state champion St. Paul's 35 to seven. And also a couple more scores locally. Chickasaw leads St. Luke's 12 to zero. Viger up 19 to zero over Hillcrest and Fairhope up 25 to zero over Andalusia. All right, schools, we'll check back in with those later on. Take a look at the uh, Alabama Sports Writers Association state polls. Well, I'm sorry, right now, these are the region standings. These aren't the polls right here. So for a region one standing, you have Jackson right there overall in the region two and O. Oh, Viger one and O. Oh, we know they picked up a win over Blunt last week for the battle of Pritchard. We can take it over to 5A Region 1 if we can get that one up right quick. And there it is right there. You just talked about a few of those teams, Corey. 5A took a hit last week. As you can see, a lot of 0-1 teams right there in 5A Region 1. LaFleur open this week before they regroup and play UMS right. And you talk about St. Paul's trying to go ahead and find a way to beat a tough Spanish Fort team and UMS Wright bouncing back so far and right. doing good against Mobile Christian. And you talk about St. Paul's down, they're trying to avoid an 0-2 start. Take it up to 6A Region 1, Baldwin County right there uh, on top right there, 1-0, and and Gulf Shores 1-0. and Also, we you know Blunt took the loss last week. That's overall. They lost to Viger, and that, that ball game at the lip last week, Pike Road and McGill Tulin, that was almost like a basketball score. I think Iverson Hooks may have just scored again, Corey. Yeah. He was running all up and down the field over the Yellow Jackets Sports last week. Sports Illustrated National Player of the 
of the week. You calling him the freak of the week, the John wow. Garcia Jr. It was basketball on grass sure was. at the lip. You could have put a basketball court 94 feet, and Philip Murphy, the boys' basketball coach at McGill, would have been happy <laughs> with that type of score. Unfortunately, the Yellow Jackets weren't able to come away with a big win. All right, take it up to 7A Region 1, and uh, Foley got a win last night. You talked about it. You were doing the PA work. They won over Murphy last week, and we know Baker, Bryant, Theodore all won last week. But right now, that's the huge right here, the ball game we have tonight. Bryant and Theodore. So we're going to start on the top since we're at 7A and take it to the Alabama Sports Writers Association poll. The first seven teams all won and remained the same from last week. Austin falls out of the top ten with a loss, making the way for James Clemens to move up one spot to eight. And Oak Mountain enters at number ten. Just outside of the top ten, Baker actually picked up one vote this week. We don't have it down there, but Baker picked up one vote. Let's take it down to 6A and see what type of action they have going on in there, the Spanish Fort Toros are the new number one team in 6A after Pinson Valley dropped their season opener and fell two spots to number three. The last time the Toros were number one was week six of the 2016 poll, and McGill drops out of the top ten but still picks up 16 votes in the poll. Now, this poll does not look correct, Corey. That, that has records from last year, so that is uh, not correct. Spanish that's Sport preseason. Is the number. Yeah, that's the preseason poll, so that's not current poll right there. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get the 5A and 4A poll up, so we uh, won't worry about that. We'll try to take a quick break. About two minutes left here in halftime. Take a quick break and come back and bring you more action. How about the second half kickoff for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week? <laughs> inside education. Come with us as we take a look at what's happening around Mobile County Public Schools as well as what's happening in your child's classroom. That's Inside Education right here on the MCPSS TV Network. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. Hello, I'm Katrina Frazier. And I'm Deborah Robinson, and we would like to be your next Realtors. As homeowners, we know how confusing it can be searching to find that perfect home that fits your needs and budget. For that reason, it's important to have a reliable partner to represent you and to be there for every step of your home buying process. You'll find the services offered through Berkshire Hathaway, Home Services Cooper & Company Realtors are second to none. So whether you are buying or selling your home, call us today and let our experience work for you. It was just like an extension of home. Bishop give you that outlet to give you a career, a successful career. We're doing some great things at Bishop State. Keep an eye on us. We welcome. Welcome back to Clem Richardson Stadium. We're at halftime. Right now we're going to take it down to the field. I believe we're going to be talking with Baker coach Steve Norman as we get the headsets on him. Coach Norman, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can All hear you. right, Coach Norman. Interesting first half. Yeah. You guys started off with a great opportunity right. and drove right into the end zone. You took an early seven-point right. lead, extended to 14. We've been going back and forth this yeah. first half. Yeah, yeah, it's been that way. It's been that type of, type of a game. You know, we knew that going into this, they were going to be a hard physical team, and just right. like they've been doing, we knew they are going to give it number two a lot. We knew it was going to be that type of a game. What we got to do a better job of is take advantage of the red zone. We got to make sure that we, and we're going to take some shots downfield and try to make a big play like we did early in the game. Now, Coach Norman, we know you guys have instant replay a couple years ago. Do you still have instant replay no, now? No, we do not. No, okay. we do not. Yeah, no, no, I'm kicking myself in the behind <laughs> for not having it right now, too, because there's two, that whole play and that right. whole fiasco down there was an, was an obvious penalty, but, uh, you know, once they're not going to call. They're not going to They're not gonna change your mind on a Friday night. All right, Coach, go ahead on back to the sidelines. We do appreciate the All time, right, thank okay? thank you, brother. All right. 
Well, Corey, that answers the question right there. They don't have the instant replay anymore because yeah. we, we know that could have came into effect a few times tonight. Well, well, again, when you don't see the red flag hanging out of the coach's pocket, that's normally a sign that they don't have to have it. But this was the first test and guinea pig place that they did have the instant replay system. A couple of preseason games ago, it was Blunt versus Baker to where they tested it out, but no longer here now at Clem Richardson Stadium. Got to thank our folks at Firehouse Subs. Make sure you enjoy more subs and save more lives. A portion of subs purchased at Firehouse will go to Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. So thanks to Jim and Susie Sherman at the Greenlight Road location for taking care of us with the Firehouse Subs. Also, BSN Sports, where you can get team apparel and equipment. Whatever you need, they have you covered at BSN Sports, the heart of the game. Visit them online at bsnsports.com. Don't forget to mark your calendar. September 6th, Labor Day, all schools and offices will be closed for the Mobile County Public School System. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people know September 6th is coming up, but just in case, mark your calendar. That is Labor Day, and all schools and offices will be closed. We'll see right here if there's a holiday by either one of these teams taken in the second half. Yeah. Because if it holds fit, you could tell Steve Norman talked to his team. This is an outstanding crowd for this game. And if we're able to pull up my checklist here to start the second half, it'll give a little bit of a refresher what has to be done here in the second half for both of these teams. And while we're in the position that we are right now and why Coach Norman was preaching and harping on the instant replay situation. Miguel Frias about to kick this one off. And Jamar Hawk is going to let it go into the end zone. All right, Corey, here's your Baker, Baker checklist here. You look at Baker wanting to learn how to control the clock. They had those long drives a week ago, have had quick strikes tonight. They needed to score in the red zone. You heard Coach talk about it, got three points instead of the needed six. That's right. Special teams possessions. We saw them create a short field when Theodore early in the game had the bad snap and downed it at the five-yard line. They were able to score on that short field because of special teams. They have to score on that. Theodore has to have takeaways from turnovers. They have points off turnovers tonight sure do, so sure far. Do. They've been able to have that big bobcat push up the line of scrimmage that allows Rodgers to run and controlling the crowd, scoring those unanswered points here in the first half of action. Let's see what happens in the second half. First and 10 for the Hornets as they give it to Flowers. I'm sorry, not Flowers. Roderick Taylor, Landon Larry in for quarterback. Taylor picks up about two yards. It'll take it to second down here, second and about eight coming up for the Hornets. Ball at the 22-yard line. And again, as we're starting second half of action, the crowd is being treated to a wonderful 7A Region 1 matchup here at Clem Richards Stadium. Great weather so far. Rain has held off for us. They go back to Taylor. He shakes one guy, picks up a couple. Looks like we're going to have third and five coming up here for the Baker Hornets. Big play right here early in the third quarter. Big defensive tackle, 6'5", 350-pound sophomore, number 99, nowhere to hide around this big fella. He makes the tackle. Cam Rogers getting it done at the line of scrimmage. Third down and five yards to go for Chase Calcagney's offense. Jamari Hawkins right here in the slot. Javen Williams just underneath our graphic on the near side in the pistol formation. Little play action. Larry throws it, and it is nothing but Bobcats around it and bobbling that ball. Cameron Pruitt, strong safety core, and he's doing his push-ups. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, you know when you drop that football, you put both hands on it. Yeah. Strong safety, 6'3", 190-pound sophomore was not able to come away with that interception. And Coach Norman talked about Baker being able to take their shots down the field vertically, and that's what you want to do. It's not a turnover, but it does bring up a fourth down and five yards to go from their own 25-yard lines for Baker. Not really the start that they wanted to start off coming out of the locker room because they wanted to drag right. that field and control the clock. Now you look at Flipping the field, you hope this football bounces end over end. Is there going to be a timeout call by Baker? I believe so. Uh, play clock was almost about to expire, and Coach Norman has to burn a timeout. So hope this one doesn't come back to hunt 
the Hornets later on. Let's take, take a look at the coaches comparison, get to know both of these coaches here. Eric Collier in his ninth year at Theodore, 13 years overall as a head coach, and he's been coaching a while there as an overall winning percentage of 465. His favorite color, look at Eric Corey, Bobcat Red. And for Steve Norman in his third year here at Baker, graduated at BC Rain and went on to South Alabama. Both coaches graduates of the University of South Alabama. His favorite color, it could be black or it could be green. Or Eric, green or black. Well, you look at Eric Collier being a graduate. Uh, and he's going down to the Bayou, I mean, playing against the Bayou next week. Sure Not is. looking ahead past this game, but that's going to be another great 7A Region 1 matchup as Bart Sessions has really tried to turn the corner for the Hurricane Faithful. And you start looking at two 2-0 two possible teams in 7A Region 1, that's the matchup you want. Baker's on to punt now. Here's Hunter Eubanks gets it off. And it goes away from Quinney. I think they're going to mark it maybe at about the 49-yard line of Baker. So Theodore coming out for their first possession of the third quarter. And now taking the ball over down right here at the 49-yard line. We'll see if Theodore doesn't do anything different from the Hornets 49 yard line besides give it to the big fella number two Rogers and ride him out or whether you decide to give him a little break and get the backup Palmore. Palmore, action. yeah, Palmore's in the game right now. They give it to him. He's on the run. Who? What a collision right there at about the 44 yard line. Anytime you hear the oohs and ahs Man. from the sidelines, you know some licks are being passed. And Paul Moore, 5'10", 180 pounds, turned himself into a human bowling ball <laughs> as he just ran full steam ahead and moved the sticks forward or moved the chain forward, the down marker, to where it's going to bring up an honest second down and five yards to go. Big collision with him and Donald Caver, number 91 there. Paul Moore still in the ball game. We don't see Kirsten Rogers. Something to keep an eye on, Al. Here in the second half. Palmer dives ahead for about two or three. It's going to set up third and maybe about three coming up here for the Theodore Bobcats. Now Kirsten Rogers coming onto the field, still limping a bit, a bit gingerly there, Corey, with his ankle. We know he went out in the first possession of the ball game, or maybe second possession, but he's back now. He's definitely short yardage. The kid can definitely, definitely run the rock. Third down. Short yardage situation. Play action, and they throw it out to Ryan Quinney. It looks like he picks up the first down. A late flag comes in from one of the officials where the catch took place. I wonder if this may be a face mask or something. We'll get the call from Alan Duhon. Duhon talking to Wayne Simon on the far sidelines, and you like when the officials confer with one another. Take a look at the crew tonight led by Alan Duhon. Zachary Gross, Anthony Robb, David Howe, Carl McDowell, Wayne Simon Sr., and John Esposito. So here's the call. I believe it's going against Theodore. Coach Call, you're not happy at all. Calling Baker fans clapping. And, and Theodore's yeah, he, he's take calling time timeout. Sure, sure is. So Baker has used an early timeout. And Theodore had used an early timeout as well at the 9 18 mark. And coaches normally, when they burn that timeout, want confirmation. So it was a personal foul against Theodore. We'll come back and sort it all out and play on the other side of this break. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Each month, more than 90 guns are reported stolen from unlocked vehicles, creating the potential of serious injury or death. Lock it up. Many violent acts and crimes are committed with stolen guns. Lock it up. According to ATF, stolen guns pose a substantial threat to public safety. Lock it up. Be responsible. Take time to record your handgun serial number and secure it from thieves. Lock it up. Lock it up for me.
Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Al Weed and Corley Bounty here at Clem Richardson Stadium, also known as the Hornet's Nest on the campus of Vegas High School. So, Corey, it sounds like we had a personal foul issued and then an unsportsmanlike conduct possibly issued against the coaching staff for Baker. One of our statisticians, Matt Moore, chiming in. That's like 30 yards worth of uh, penalties. I mean, that's tough because now you're looking at close to Whoa. third down and a West Mobile Country mile. It says third and 41 on the scoreboard, Corey. I mean and the ball is at the, no, I'm sorry, the ball, ball is at the 34-yard line. So I believe it's possibly – I don't know if it's post possession no, not, to where it could be post possession. I believe you're right, Corey, because there, there's a, there's a down and distance right there. Correct. He you, did get the first down. That's that's he did what they get the first down. First. There and we and are. That's what the officials are talking about right now, and you just love the confirmation from the officials talking to one another about the correct down and distance yardage. So it's first and ten on Theodore's 33, where they were clearly in Baker territory. So those 30 yards made a big difference. They did, and, and you try to earn them back right here. You put Rodgers back there, and you hope to try to keep this Baker defense on the field and control the clock here. They hand it off to Rodgers. He takes it for, for about four yards. It's almost as if this drive has started over, but this is the same exact drive, their first drive in, this, in the uh, second half, Core. Yeah, absolutely, and the Hornets come in and, make this tackle as it's defensive back Jaden Brooks the 5'10 177 pound defensive back makes the stop positive yardage on first down though for Theodore as it brings up second down and six yards to go for the Bobcats new quarterback in for Theodore that's uh Raheem Quinney backup quarterback he shuffles around and picks up maybe two, possibly three, looking at third and about four here coming up for the Bobcats. Just different looks by this Theodore Bobcat right. offense. Offensive coordinator Justin Ridgeway, they came in a week ago scoring 28 points against Sarah Land. Now they have 29 here in the second game, so the points per game average will only increase and not move a smidgen, but you just want to see them have ball control and not turn the football over on this drive. High snap to Kirsten Rogers in that Bobcat formation. And Theodore has shot themselves in the foot, Corey, not executing well. Very high snap, Rogers couldn't control it. That's the second time tonight you've seen a higher snap, but when you have a taller quarterback, it goes ahead and pays dividends for you. Colvin Carter, the impact player, the 5'7", 165-pound senior on the stop. And now what happens is this Hornet defense gets a huge stop trying to get the crowd back involved offensively when they get this football. Jamari Hawkins setting up on his 25-yard line, and Miguel Frias will punt. After this play, we're going to put up our Brain Buster Tees, Corey, Game of the Week Brain Buster Tees. Baker still running personnel back and forth on the field, and a flag comes out. I believe that was Hunter Eubanks running onto the field late. I don't know if that caused them to have 12. One of those unforced errors yep. that will drive a coach bananas, but it doesn't lead to a first down. Yeah, so not enough to get the first it, down. It just gives you a different down and distance situation, which allows you to get a better roll once you get this football. Hawkins still at the 20-yard line waiting for the punt from Frias. Want to have a good snap here so he can get it away. Gives you a different look to try to make Baker jump. They're three to make yards off jump. the line of scrimmage. Yep. Frias gets a nice one off. And it's going to roll out of bounds. All right, so let's get up that game of the week brain buster. See what we have in store this week, Corey. All right, what NFL team has two former Theodore Bobcats on its roster? Okay. What NFL team has two former Theodore Bobcats on its roster? Well, just the fact that you says two former Theodore Bobcats on its roster, that's very impressive for any school to have any NFL players sure. that go on to that next level, which is the highest level of football right. in the world. One that comes to mind quickly 
the guys who play for the 49ers, Jaquaski Tart, I can't get his name right, Corey. Jaquaski Tart and Jimmy Ward both played at Davidson and both went to the Super Bowl. Absolutely. From as the members same of the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Josh Flowers in. Baker going to that Wildcat formation. And that's not going to happen. Big number 97, David Cunningham wraps that up real quick. Big. 6'3", 235 pounds, senior on the stop. But positive yardage for the Hornets on first down. Even though it's only two yards, picks up you're two. still able to go ahead and control this clock, which is what Coach Norman wants to do, have great ball control, as well as take that strike early on down and distance. But here's second down and eight. Not really a si situation where you can take that long strike. Three wide receivers to the left, two to the right. Empty set for Flowers. Quarterback keeper last time he had it. They give the jet sweep to Jamari Hawkins. We've seen that play a few times tonight. He's trying to make some things happen. He is close. He is close to the line to gain, I believe, is the 34. Hawkins. And the chains are going to move. Sees the ball in, make sure he's dipping and dodging, getting positive yards. A big offensive lineman down for the Baker Hornets. Officials time out here, injured player. Number 71 there Joseph for the Miles. Hornets. The yeah, Joe, Joey Miles. One thing we haven't seen too much tonight of Corey Cramps tonight. You know, humidity was extremely high, close to 94% at kickoff, right. as evident to where all you had to do was walk upstairs and you started to sweat profusely. But the breeze, and now that the sun has gone down, the humidity has definitely dropped. The breeze has uh, felt real nice tonight coming out of the north to our backs here atop the uh, press box at Clem Richardson Stadium. Been feeling very nice all night long as Miles still down on the ground. They're taking a look at him. Got to thank our folks over there at Bishop State being part of the team here for this year. Don't forget. Registration for fall semester at Bishop State is going on right now. And also, they have a location in Theodore. It's located on Highway 90 right behind Hardy's. They're offering evening classes for your convenience. Classes this semester will begin the day after Labor Day and end before Thanksgiving. That means you can finish classes before the holidays. So registration is open right now. Visit bishop.edu and follow the steps under the new students tab. Bishop State, it's a great place to start. It was a great place to start collegiate volleyball yesterday sure was, Corey. as you witnessed sure history yourself. I sure was. I was uh, doing PA last night at Bishop State Community College and uh, they won their first ever volleyball match uh, last night defeating Gadsden State and Corey it was a shutout. Three games to nil. So uh, big ups to uh, head coach Nicole Keyshock and also athletic director Trenton Eager for having the vision to get the uh, volleyball program started. So they escort Miles off the field First and 10 coming up here. Josh Flowers on the move. He's going to keep it. Needs one or two blocks. He just takes it right up the middle. Picks up about five hard-earned yards, Corey. Hard stop by this Theodore defense, and that's Demon Jones, the inside linebacker, 5'11", 195-pound junior. But one of the things you want to see your quarterback, Flowers, do is keep that football a little bit closer to his body. He's out yeah. waving it away, away from his body. You have a defensive lineman or defensive back easily swiping that. That ball is going to bounce right out of your hand. So great job of getting positive yardage, but the young fella's got to learn to tuck that football high and tight to his body when he gets past the line of scrimmage. Baker continuing with this formation. Trip receivers to the top and two to the near side. Empty set for Flowers. He's trying to get it out. Just going to take it. Like you said, Corey, you need to keep that ball close and tucked in. And he does dump it down. Lead to Jamari Hawkins. Hawkins on the run. And Corey, he's going to take it to the house. 62 Look yards. Look at that drive. I mean, that play, 62 yards. You're right, Corley Bounty. Jamari Hawkins with the touchdown. A little soft touch pass from Josh Flowers. But you look at Flowers extend the play with his feet and knew that he had not crossed the line of scrimmage. Right. He's looking down, wants to go vertically. He pump fakes, goes ahead and goes to his check down. Great job of not crossing the line of scrimmage, staying alive, and finds his dump down. And I tell you what, Hawkins, folks, shows you at 5'10", 175, pounds he can turn on the burners and that is the type of excitement that this Baker Hornet fans wanted to see and 
you talked about capitalizing in the red zone. You didn't have to worry about getting in the red zone because it was a track meet right. to the end zone. Hunter Kill go on for the PAT. And there it is. We are at 29-24. Boy, we've got a good one. Don't move. We're coming back with more action. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week, brought to you by Bishop State. If you look at the numbers, Mobile County Public Schools is making great strides. With more than 53,000 students, 7,000 employees, and 90 schools, we are consistently increasing our four-year graduation rate and our first-class pre-K program. We continue to strive for national recognition and continue to prepare our students for the global workforce. And we do all of this with one goal in mind, to equip and empower college and career-ready graduates. Mobile County Public Schools, we're learning today, leading tomorrow. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Al Wheat and Corey Bounty. Boy, we got a good one going on right now, Corey. Yeah, I mean, uh, we knew it was going to be a great one, and that's the type of explosive play that this Hornet hooligan fans needed to get them into the game, to get the crowd into the game. And now here it is, 29-24 to 24 in favor of Theodore. And let's see if Theodore can find a way to get their offensive rhythm getting going. And, you know, this defense led by J.C. Todd is going to be talking to the guys on the sideline saying, right. hey, we get a stop right here. Our offense is going to go help us. And, again, a slugfest here in the second half here in West Mobile. Adam Gata on for the kickoff. We'll try to get that scoring drive summary up in a matter of moments. Will James, we know he's exciting. Takes it up to about the 30-yard line. Well, we know Will James took it 65 yards before it bounced into Braden Jenkins on that kickoff. That's true. After our early Baker score, so at least they did not allow special teams to hurt them there. But now Theodore is going to get the ball right close to the 20, yeah, they're spotting it at the 29, Corey. 29 yard line, their own 29 yard line. And I would like to see if Quinney, Ryan Quinney or Raheem Quinney can get back involved from Pogue rolling outside of the pocket as they're going to empty set. Trip receivers to the near side as Pogue unleashes that one to Raheem Quinney. He gets past the 45-yard line. Big pickup right there on first down for the Bobcats. That's what you can do when you spread the field and go empty. You mentioned at the beginning of the telecast that Demetrius Pogue has the ability to do the RPOs. That's right. And you have to respect his feet and put a spy on him. But when that tight end or wide receiver gets past the line of scrimmage, if it's a quick release, there's a lot of green grass there. You just have to make sure you put the pass on the money. Throwing that one out to Braden Jenkins. Boy, he's got some blockers. And he's continuing to run first down plus more, Corey. And Theodore is on the move. Two plays there in Baker Hornets territory already. Simple swing pass to Braden Jenkins, the 5'9", 175-pound junior, who was able to score off of that fortuitous bounce that was taken on the kickoff. But that's huge first down pickup for Theodore as they're trying to show the balance of another empty set, three to the right side, two to the left, wide receiver wise. Pogue taking his time, working through progressions, dumps it over the middle, hooks up with Raheem Quinney once again. That's about an eight yard pickup. Three passes in a row here for the Theodore Bobcats and three first downs. Jaden Campbell on the stick for the Hornets. Great stop making sure that there was no yards after catch, but it's going to bring up a short yardage situation down in distance for the Bobcats. Second and one, ball on the 29-yard line. Great shot right there down the line of scrimmage from our camera crew. Cam Johnson has the height advantage, but they're going the opposite way, and it almost turns into the Raheem Quinney show with three in a row just past his outstretched fingertips. And they were picking on the cornerback. 
for the Baker Hornets. Just a speed shot right there, and he would like to have that one back, put a little bit more air under it, but you've been throwing the five to seven yard intermediate passes, and here it is now on third down and short. You have the ability to bring in Kirsten Rogers, who is nursing an ankle injury for the Bobcats and playing through that. That way he's limiting his touches early on down and distance, but he's gonna be in the backfield as a wing back. And he's gonna do some blocking from Demetrius Pogue, who sneaks his way just past the 25 yard line. That's another first down. This is a great drive here for the Bobcats score. And it moves the sticks more importantly with 3.09 remaining here in the third quarter of action. We've had explosive plays by both teams, but a very critical drive for Baker to stop Theodore here in the third quarter because you're within striking distance. That's right. If you get that stop and score, you have a one-score game, but you let Theodore continue to pile on it, it's going to be harder for you. Pogue tosses it out to Braden Jenkins. He gets the ball under control. Scoops for it for a couple, maybe picks up two or three as we're under three minutes here in the third quarter. Don't forget, between the third and fourth quarter, we will reveal the answer to our game of the week, Brain Buster. So stick around, it'll be coming up. Donald Caver, the defensive end, 220 pound senior with the stop for the Bobcats. Second down and eight yards to go from the Hornets 22 yard line. And if you're able to chew this clock up for Theodore, you know, whether it's fresh bodies, whether it's Rodgers, or whether you look at the quarterback with the quarterback keeper, Pope, either way it goes, they want to control the line of scrimmage. Little play action, nice play drawn up right there as that pass is complete to Tavares Sullivan. No flags on the play, and Theodore is in the red zone ready to score. Look at this. Look at the play action. Oh, that's nice, Corey. And what a catch. Great snag. By the young man, 6'1", 175-pound senior, goes low to make that catch. First down and goal to go from the Hornets five the yard five. line for the Bobcats. Nice grab by Sullivan right there. As he held on to the pigskin, you can see the arm of Pogue and the accuracy he had. Play clock under 10, Theodore trying to hurry up. Looks busted, but it's not busted for Demetrius Pogue because he busts into the end zone five yards, just like his jersey number, number five, and that's a touchdown for the quarterback. Get a hat on a hat. He's able to read the defense, whether it's a busted play or not. He was looking to pitch it. It wasn't right. there. He just gets behind that big offensive line, gets his five-yard touchdown, and adds six more for the Theodore Bobcats. But great job by the quarterback, seeing the recognition of the busted play, hat on a hat by the offensive line, six more for the Theodore Bobcats. Free has on for the extra point, and just like he has done all night, he boots it through. Theodore on top, 36 to 24. Boy, this is a good one, don't move. More action coming up on the other side. At any given time, trauma can happen and how we deal with it, and how we make peace with it. Starts with me. With Project Thrive, I'm taking the pledge. I pledge to believe and support others experiencing trauma. Will you join Project Thrive and its team of partners who are working together to address issues of trauma? Take the pledge, take a stand, and let's make Mobile a trauma-informed community. Welcome you back to the Hornet's Nest inside of Clem Richardson Stadium here on the campus of Baker High School. Theater on top, 36 to 24. Corey, the hooligans got excited a few moments ago, and now they're back quiet again because Theodore came and shut them down. That's what you have to do if you're Theodore. You want to go ahead and make these fans sit on their hands mm -hmm. out here in West Mobile and don't give the home team a reason to get excited. But 36 to 24, our score with 146 remaining here in the third quarter of action. We're setting up for a great fourth quarter coming up. You want to make sure you stay tuned in and locked into that brain buster question as well. Priaz boosts that one down the middle. Hawkins picks it up. He just finished scoring on Baker's last possession. 
He's trying to do something with this one, and boy, does he do something. Gets it up to about the 32-yard line. Great return by Jamari Hawkins. Has great change of speed, change of direction as a returner. Late flag, Corey. And, and if it's against the Bobcats, you love the additional yardage that will be tacked on to the end of this. Not quite sure what happened as I was looking to see exactly what occurred. Personal foul. So a personal foul against Theodore, that'll attack 15 yards on top of that 32-yard run from Jamari Hawkins. And the Bobcats are near the midfield stripe as they place the ball just shy of the 47-yard line. That Whoa. was an eight-play, 71-yard drive by the Theodore Bobcats. And you start looking at time of possession. If you're Steve Norman, you want it to be in your favor. That's right. But it has been in the Bobcats' favor tonight and again the bobcats got blitzed early by this horn and they were stung early oh, they, they, they were able they to take came that and stinger. punched them in the mouth absolutely oh, sure did Curry. and it was 14 to 0 early here in the first quarter uh with a lot of momentum going and moving forward but flowers is back in the game flowers at quarterback and theodore is still in this 3-4 defense see what they can do flowers has time gonna dump it down to javen williams just in front of us here, that's a first down. And they're gonna mark him down at about the 38 yard line. Nice pass from Josh Flowers. Look at the time. The young man looked at his primary wide receivers at second, went to his dump down, probably his third target on the play. So that's a great way of reading the defense by this young sophomore quarterback. Moving the chains, getting the first down for the Baker Hornets. Now the ball at the Bobcat 37 yard line. One eleven remaining here, and the clock counting in the third quarter. Hawkins on the jet sweep, picks up maybe two or three. Well, they're gonna credit him with a bit more, maybe five on that. Well, maybe four yards, that's what the PA guy's gonna say. So second and six coming up here for Baker. Ball sits squarely on the 35-yard line of Theodore. We have had back and forth scoring all night long here in this contest. A great Region 1 battle. Theodore, Region champs two out of the past three years. They know they are the hunted, Corey. Look quick out to Chandra Young Jr. Knocks his mouthpiece out of his mouth. That hit from Landon Collier wasn't nothing to mess with, Corey. You see, There's a mouthpiece right there. Wow. Coach supplies it for him. But again, great pass by Flowers. You would think it's a hard or easy pass to make with no defender being there, but you have to make sure that that pass is completed. Third down and two yards to go now for the Hornets, and they're going to have to run one more play before this third quarter ends. They sure will. Is there about a 10 second difference between play clock and game clock? clock. Ball on 30 yard line. Josh Flowers just gonna keep it, plow ahead. First down for the Hornets. That'll stop the clock to move the change. Coach Norman told me at the top of the week, Corey, a ball game like this, they need to win. They, they need to say, hey, we're ready for it to be a number one, number two seed. Let's host a playoff game. Not trying to look too far down the schedule, but on the back end, they have to play Fairhope, they have to play Daphne. Uh, they know they got some tough games coming up, but right now, he says, we need to get over the hump this Friday night and get that early season big win. Very important for this Baker program as we enter the fourth quarter. And again, this is where you get your fans behind you. You get your band behind you. This is what you have off-season conditioning for from the time the season ends until the time preseason begins. This is what you are ready and made up for here in late August and the beginning of the season. All right, Cora, let's see what you're made of. Let's put up the brain buster question here. We put it out there in the third quarter. What NFL team has two former Theodore Bobcats on its roster? All right, Corey, you've had time to think about it, and Theodore has actually scored one since you've had time to think about it. So uh, we'd like to uh, offer a guess, Mr. LeBound. I am going to go with J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Oh, he did it on beat. Let's, uh, let's reveal the answer and see what we have in the truck there. It is the New York Jets. A linebacker, C.J. Mosley, and running back, LaMichael P. Ryan, both former Theodore Bobcats. And, Corey, here's your plus one. 
there's another local player from Mobile who plays for the New York Jets. Do you happen to know who that is? Hmm, not off the top of my he head. He prepped at St. Paul's, played football at the University of Memphis. He's a linebacker. They got him playing a defensive end, Bryce Huff. Another local guy for the New York Jets. So there's your plus one tonight. It's always important when you start talking about per capita of who all is in, involved. But Title Towel, my main man, uh, gave me a little heads up about the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. That's and right. That means he's tuning into the broadcast. So I want to thank Title <laughs> Towel for tuning in. And I always like to see these answers come across to try to, you say, phone a friend a couple of weeks ago. It's always good to get feedback from my friends. Hey, Corey, you know a lot of folks. Here's our scoring summary right there. Both teams put up touchdowns in the third quarter. So we have had a contest tonight where we have seen scoring in each quarter tonight as we are 36-24, theater on top. And, Corey, at this rate, I'm expecting another exciting quarter and our last one here for this contest. Flowers on the move, just going to keep it as he runs up the middle, picks up seven or eight. Way to make something out of nothing. Yeah, I mean, just look at the ability of Flowers to make the defenders miss. And that's what's critical when he's able to extend the play. I love the fact that he's keeping his eyes down the field, right. looking for his check downs, looking for his primary. It's not there. His secondary wide receiver not open, just goes ahead and he's learning again to keep that football a little bit closer to his body as when he's in traffic, it won't get knocked or punched away. Baker goes with that empty set, which opens up the field for Flowers as well. First and 10 ball on the, I'm sorry, second and one ball on the 18-yard line. Flowers just going to scramble. He's going to pick it up as he runs outside of our camera. He dives in. Is it enough? Touchdown, 18 yards by Josh Flowers. His second touchdown tonight on the ground. All Flowers wow. all the time. And he looked to bloom on this play, Al. Yes, sir. The 6'2", 208-pound sophomore tucks it. Look how tight that ball is to his body there. He makes sure he's not going to fumble it. He gets past the goal line, gives fourth quarter excitement and action here at Clem Richardson Stadium and puts six on the board for the Hornets. Kilgore on for the extra point. And he knocks it right through. It's 36-31. Boy, we're having a good one here. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week brought to you by Bishop State. What's the matter, baby? You're not feeling good? School-aged children are at a higher risk of getting and spreading germs and viruses. To help protect the spread, students are encouraged to stay home when sick. Parents, it's important for your child to remain at home at least 24 hours after they no longer have a fever of 100 degrees or higher without the use of medications. Please help us maintain a healthy learning environment. There's a shot right there, Corey. 18-yard run from Josh Flowers. His second touchdown on the ground tonight has also thrown one. That 62-yard, I guess you call it a little floater pass to Jamari <laughs> Duncan Hawkins. But, so that's three touchdowns for the young man. You know, but what you do, Al, is you go ahead and you answer Theodore's score. You're within five points right now. It's a one-score game for the Baker Hornets here. You get your Hornet hooligan student body excited. You get your fans back excited. You get the band to play the school song, the fight song. So that's interesting enough. Now what you have to do is to see what quarterback Demetrius Pogue can come away with offensively. And if you don't want to kick to Will James in this situation. There it is. And if you get it to him, he's dangerous. Oh, he's got the sideline, Corey as they bring him down about the 39-yard line. Got to thank Firehouse Subs for what they're doing for us. Big ups to Jim and Susie Sherman. Thank them for each and every week for feeding the crew here. Stop by and see them at the uh, Greenlight Road location of Firehouse Subs. Firehouse Subs, make sure you enjoy more subs to save more lives. Also, BSN Sports, glad to have them on the team. If your team needs apparel or equipment, visit BSN Sports online at bsnsports.com. BSN Sports, the heart of the game. First and 10 coming up here for Theodore. Empty set for Demetrius Pogue, ball at the 40-yard line. 
Did her on top five points. Just going to run right up the middle, middle and keep that one. Quarterback keeper. Nice run by Poe. An update from Lad Peebles Stadium. Viger up 25 to 14 with 259 left in the game over Hillcrest Evergreen. Seven yard pickup by Pogue. Viger looking to go 2 0 to start the season there, Corey. Second and three here, another empty set, trips at the top. He's just going to call his own number. Oh, Corey, look at him going up the middle to the 45 yard line of Baker. That's a first down. Tay Houghton, the 5'10, 250 pound junior with the stop, but not before moving the chains, and it's again the big offensive line getting the push yep. up front, and that's exactly what you want here. Early in the fourth quarter is to control the trenches, control the line of scrimmage, and try to wear down this Hornet defense, but again, in a one-score game, you just want to make sure that you're taking care of the football. Now, in the Hornet territory are the Bobcats right at the 47-yard line of the Hornets. Man in motion, they give it to Braden Jenkins. And he is trying to take it up the sidelines. He's knocked out of bounds at about the 17 to 18 yard line. Nice play call right there from Justin Ridgeway on the jet sweep. On the sweep, anytime he bounces into the outside, he's going to get additional yardage. But Jaden Campbell comes away and pushes him out of bounds. The six foot, 170 pound junior lays the lumber, but not before a 25 or 30 yard gain for the Bobcats. And they're controlling the clock in the line of scrimmage here to start the fourth quarter. First and 10, ball on the 17, inside of the red zone. Theodore and this offense has been clicking on all cylinders all night long. Play clock under 10. Pogue has to get this snap off within three seconds. And time Coach out. Collier wants the timeout. They Coach couldn't Norman. quite get things together, Corey. Coach Norman wants to delay a game. Coach Collier wants the timeout. He's able to get it. Baker only has one timeout remaining. So they, they gave it to Theodore. Okay, good. All right, next week we're going to come back here to Clem Richardson Stadium. But it won't be the Hornets, it'll be the Panthers and the Warriors. Make sure you join us at 6.50 as we go up live for the next MCPSS high school football game of the week. And I know the Panthers are looking to do something, Corey. They have been scoreless, hell scoreless for the entire season. Let's take a look at the remaining schedule for Baker High School, now inside of region play. Next week they are at Foley, then they'll host Bryant, then at MGM, we're scheduled to have that game on the 17th quarter, the Battle of Westmobile. And the key component, you got the bye right there in the middle of the schedule for Coach Norman. Well, you mentioned Davidson playing here next week against Murphy. Anthony all over Davidson tonight, 54 to 14. Also, Hewitt Trustville leading Saraland 41 to 0. Blunt trailing Greenville 14 to 12. Spanish Fort leading St. Paul's 35 to 7. And you're looking at Chickasaw beating St. Luke's 24-0 also. And here's the look at the remaining schedule for Theodore Bobcats. All the region games are highlighted in yellow. So they're going to have Bryant next week, then at Daphne and playing Murphy. And just like Baker, they get that by right in the middle of the schedule, Corey. So kind of gives them a little breather. On the back end, they have Davidson, Fairhope, Foley, and Mary Montgomery for their region game. Bryant leading MGM 28-12 in a final Faith Academy defeats Williamson 13 to seven. Big win for the Fighting Jack Frenches out there as they were defeated last week. Little play action and they go to Raheem Quinney and boy bringing the wood is Quincy Horn on the hit incomplete pass. Great job of going on the slant, riot, slant route. Nice throw, steps into it, has enough time, but a great delivery, great stick, and a stinger by Quincy Man. Horn, tooting his own horn on that <laughs> particular play. But that's a huge stop for on first down by the Baker Hornets now. Second down and 10 yards to go from the 17-yard lines of Baker. Play clock goes under 10. Kirsten Rogers just to the right, and they just get that snap off. Little play action once again. They go back to Raheem Quinney. He catches it. No, incomplete, incomplete, Corey. Couldn't bring it in. Could not haul it in. It's and the he process. is pleading. I had it. I had it. Yeah, it, it's the process of the catch. And now you try to get your fans excited 
on a long down and distance situation in the red, almost in the red zone or in the red zone area at the 18-yard line. The Baker Hornets. Oh, the Hooligans and the line. crowd are getting excited. Yes, indeed. You have to because this is the difference maker in a one-score game in the red zone area. Try to hold the Bobcats to a field goal here in the red zone. Third and 10, play clock under five. Hogue needs to get this one off, and Coach Collier is going to have to burn another timeout. Corey, I think that may be his last one that he used. Take a look at that previous play. Just wasn't able to come away with it, and the official right there yeah, on top close. of it. It was close. It was close, Corey. It was close. So Theodore out of timeouts, write this down, the 9.33 mark of the ball game remaining, Theodore out of timeout score. The good thing is two timeouts on this drive, as a matter of fact. They are ahead on the scoreboard. It's, it's a difference if you're trailing. But again, you work on situational football on certain days of the week to where you do your two-minute drill, whether it's every day or certain aspects, two-minute drill in the red zone, two-minute drill driving the length of the field. So here on this condensed field, or the shortened field rather, uh, 17 yards to go before you get a touchdown. Now the Hornet Hooligan fans, the band, the stands, you can hear those metal stands, those cowboys, cowbells ringing. Oh yeah. At third down and 10, our press box is starting to rock a little bit too. And we do know that Theodore has been in a situation where they have had a delay of game. I'm sorry, not a delay of game, a false start, but they've been in a situation had to bring points off the board. So Coach Collier and the crew want to get the right call in this situation. Demetrius Poe scrambling and just lost it incomplete to Braden Jenkins. I believe he had enough to turn around, maybe get a yard or two to get the first down, but couldn't complete it. Jenkins mistimed his jump. That's he what jumps it was, a little bit early. If you look at it, Pogue just ducks and dodges, and here it is, he jumps a little oh. bit too early, and he needed another inch to come away with that. And this is going to be a tremendously long field goal attempt if they decide to go for it, some 34 yards. I believe they are going to kick it, so. 34 yard attempt. You got to be careful that it's not blocked and returned here because this would be a huge swing like if it is blocked. It, placing it on the 26 course, so a 36 yarder coming up here from Miguel Frias. He's left footed. He draws it too much, too much hook he puts on it. It is no good. And the Hornet faithful are excited and the hooligans are riled back up. Baker gets the big stop. We're coming back as they take over possession. 9.20 remaining in the ball game. I'm telling you, this is a good one. Don't move. We really mean it. Want a major in psychology, engineering, criminal justice, English, history, or something else? Take your general education courses with us, then transfer your credits to the four-year university of your choice. Want to learn a trade and go straight into the workforce? We have the programs and the trains to help you land a high-wage and high-demand career. Save time and thousands while conveniently taking classes safely online or on campus. Register now. Bishop.edu. Don't forget to mark your calendar. September 6th is Labor Day, so all schools and offices for the Mobile County Public School System will be closed for Labor Day. Corey Coach Collier told me he was confident with Frias 45 yards and in. He had the distance, just put too much draw on that one. Yeah, I mean, you could ask for a left-footed kicker. You got it on the correct hash that right. you wanted it. Yep. And now the clock's running. Baker has to move forward here. Early down and distance, very important. Only picked up a yard there on first down. Second and nine coming up. They're sticking with Josh Flowers. He has the hot hands and the hot legs tonight for the Hornets. Two touchdowns on the ground, one in the air as he looks to the sideline to get the call. Trip receivers to the top. Ball at the 21 yard line of Baker. Oh, and that's a fumble cord. That's a fumble. Theodore's on top of it. I believe they do recover it. That would be Baker's second turnover tonight. And that's a huge fumble recovery by the Bobcats. The defensive lineman comes from behind and knocks the ball away from Flowers. He didn't feel the pressure coming from behind. And it looks like it's 97. 
David Cunningham or Quinny, I can't tell. It's either Quinny or Cunningham. Maybe Ryan Quinny Believe hitting it. from behind. If we can replay that back one more time so we can see who it hit. I know there was, there was a seven involved. Couldn't see whether it was a 97 or a 17. But it was definitely the pressure from behind the big defensive lineman. Well, that's or defensive Quinny end. right there. So it was definitely 97 from behind. David Cunningham. Yeah, Cunningham. Great pressure. Yep, yes, Cunningham. it was Cunningham. And that's a, a turnover. That's Puts second turnover. right back in the red zone area, square on the 20-yard line. The fans get right back involved, back to square one here. And also, Corey, that was good coverage by the Bobcat secondary because because uh, Flowers couldn't throw the ball to anyone. No one was open. They shut down Kirsten Rogers. That's about a three-yard loss on that play. Second and long coming up here for the Bobcats. Two timeouts remaining. Coach Steve Norman only going to call a timeout in an emergency situation because you want to save those for the under two-minute mark for your offense and or defense. But nothing going positive at the line of scrimmage there for this big offensive line. Credit the defensive line for standing the O-line of the Bobcats up. No gain, second and 10 to go. Empty set once again for Demetrius Pogue. Tries to catch Raheem Quinney in the slot, incomplete. Third and long coming up here for the Bobcats. The bad thing about that incompletion is it does stop the clock, and it still brings up third down and 10 yards to go. Now, from this spot right here, if Theodore is not able to gain any more offensive yardage, it's a 37-yard attempt. So if you're able to push the pile forward just three or four yards, it makes a tremendous difference as we had a miss of some 27 yards earlier. Pass out to Quinney, and it hits the defender in the back of the helmet, incomplete. They're trying to go back to Quinney once again. I think it bounced off the helmet. What was that defender, Corey? Ty Gould, number 15. The young sophomore cornerback holds his own in that situation now. Fourth down and 10 yards to go. Back-to-back -back pass calls by Justin Ridgeway. Stops the clock with 742. You don't want to have the field goal block. It's okay if you miss it, but you definitely don't want to have the type of momentum to where there's a scoop and score. So Frias setting up for a 37-yarder here. He's getting his holder to scoot over just a little bit, Corey. He put too much draw on that last one. Frias puts it up and right no good. They say it's wide right. I thought from my angle it kind of got that corner, but maybe it pushed a little right, Corey. It, it definitely looked like it was pushing right when it left. Again, that's from the left hash wow. for the left-footed uh, left kicker. And he just wasn't able to get it through the uprights. But special teams play are always critical. And special teams possessions, Baker was able to hold. And that turnover did not cost them anything besides valuable time on the clock. That's right. So now Baker takes over. Two timeouts. On their own 20-yard line, looking with Flowers at quarterback with one running back behind him to go ahead and get positive yardage. Two timeouts in the back pocket of Coach Steve Norman. Hawkins goes into motion. He's just clearing out space for Flowers to take it up the middle. They may credit him with two or three on the carry. Ryan See where they mark it at the 24-yard line, so four yards on the carry right there. And if you're Theodore's kicker, you just got to put that behind you. The two misses, you definitely have the leg. Free is, they're going to need you, young fella. So go ahead and shake that off. Continue to play the next play. <laughs> you know, don't hold your head down. Your defense, trusting your defense, trusting yourself. Moving forward, this young man is has an outstanding leg for the Theodore Bobcats. Little quick out to Jamari Hawkins. They set up a little screen for him. He's he picks up a few, maybe about two yards. We'll call it a long two, Corey. It's going to be third down and short yardage situation. Now, this is the biggest third down of the game for the Baker Hornets. Oh, yeah, this is it. you're able to get it, you're able to keep that clock moving, but you don't want to throw an incompletion here to stop the clock. So it's going to be a critical call for first-year offensive coordinator Chase Calcagni. Ball on the 28-yard line. It looks closer to the 29 than the 28. Short yardage situation here coming up for the Hornets. 
They bring Hawkins to clear it out. You kind of kind of figured Flowers would keep it right there and just dive across the line of scrimmage. Picks up the first down easily. And here's the thing, with you only trailing by five points, you just have to have ball control. You want to have one of those long, sustained drives to where you don't give Theodore an opportunity to get the ball back, and that's going to be the heat timeout here in the fourth quarter. At the 6-10 mark, we're going to take a quick break and come back and bring you some more action. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. This is a program for any middle school student who's actually behind. This opportunity offers kids a chance to do two grades in one year. If it wasn't for Star Academy, I would still be in eighth grade and probably still struggling. We are one-on-one. -on -one. We have small classrooms and we're able to give students that personal touch, that personal attention. I know I'm coming to see good teachers, good attitude, and also they're here to teach us what we need to learn. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. As we are inside of the Hornets' nest, and there's a back view of some of the hooligans there. Tonight is camo night, Corey. Got some camo in the stands. And a lot of folks here. Great turnout for both, both teams tonight, Baker and for Theodore, and a great night for football. Flowers trying to connect and does. Gets it up to Javen Williams. Williams picks up the first down just past the 45-yard line. You know what I love about this young quarterback? He was able to put the turnover behind him and go ahead and play the next play. And now his defense gives him back the football, and he's able to get positive yardage. And this young fella keeps his eyes down the field. He doesn't hit his primary wide receiver. He comes back to his second and third read, which is very impressive. And Javon Williams, the six foot, 160 pound senior, knew to come back to the football and help his quarterback out, give him a fresh set of downs to the Hornets half. A quick handoff to Roger Taylor, catch him on the delayed draw there. Offensive line just trying to push that pile. They haven't whistled it dead yet. And Coach Collier's like, come on, man, blow the whistle. Yeah, Jordan <laughs> Bolden, the big defensive tackle, 295 pounds, was the first one to get that Bobcat paw on him, grabbed him by the jersey and waited for help to come on the way. But six-yard gain, second down and four yard to go for Joshua Flowers and you, you have Roderick Taylor at his running back, two wide receivers, a two by two set now, shown by the Baker Hornets. Ball on the 49 yard line of Theodore. The Baker faithful are feeling it. And Josh Flowers is feeling it, Corey, as he drags a couple of the Bobcats up to the 22 yard line. As the clock ticks down, Baker knows this is probably it for them. If they don't score, that may be the ball game. Look at the yards after contact. Man. That's a designed quarterback draw. That's right. All the way, and he's brought down high by the secondary. A good job of Theodore's defense, of Braden Jenkins finding a way to save a touchdown. Flowers keeps it again, falls into the red zone. But Al, the difference between this young man carrying the football here late in the game, he's protecting the football. That is Unlike true. Unlike earlier, where he had it knocked away from behind and carried it loosely when he still secured it. But now here in the late in the game, Baker's trying to grind this clock out, right. not give Theodore an opportunity to have a quick strike. So they're taking as much time off the clock Getting in the red zone area is exactly what Coach Steve Norman mentioned at halftime they needed to do. Score in the red zone. That's true. The difference in the contest right here, four minutes remaining in this huge 7A Region 1 matchup. And Coach Norman's going to call a timeout right there as the ball is on the 18-yard line. We said he had two in his back pocket, so he has the leisure of doing it. Corey, who are you thinking about for your career tech education player of the game? I have two guys in mind right now and one of them could possibly take it, in my opinion, depending on what happens on this drive. Well, for the Baker Hornets, I, I really like Joshua Flowers. I'm with you there. And for Theodore, I like the quarterback, Demetrius Pope. 
Yeah, I was thinking about uh, Kirsten Rogers, but Polk has really stepped up here as the game has developed. Yeah, I mean, he, he's been the workhorse in regards to his decision making. Rogers got dinged up early, so we didn't really have an opportunity to see him at full strength throughout the entire contest. But here with four minutes exactly remaining in this huge 7A Region 1 early Region 1 matchup in the season in week one technically because you have week zero, some teams used for jamborees, some people use them as a huge matchup right. in week zero. UMS played this Baker team and got shut out a week ago. Baker on the verge here in the red zone, encouraging the crowd to get behind them, give them a little bit more energy. Second and seven, ball on the 18 yard line, exactly four minutes remaining in the contest. Let's see what Chris Cal Cagney has, Chase Cal Cagney has called up for the Hornets. They give it to Roger Taylor, Taylor. and that's a fumble. That ball is out. Allen Duhon signals turnover. That is the third turnover tonight, second fumble, and the crowd is devastated. The Hornets don't even want to come off the field, Corey. But you have no way to review the play. There's no instant You don't replay. have instant replay available. We do have it available. You look at the ball secured by Roderick Taylor. Ball is, is it out? out? That ball Let's is out. Let's run it back. We'll that be able to out. see if it, the pigskin is the loose is down. before, and it's a lot of traffic there. Yeah, that ball is out. Al, you see it loose. I'm having a hard time identifying whether it is loose or not before the knee was down, but nonetheless. But nonetheless, there's no instant replay, Corey, and that one is going to come back, and I know that is really going to hurt and haunt the Baker Hornets right there. Well, we talked about mm, turnovers, takeaways from turnovers on my checklist. That That's was right. the number one thing that I had, and – you look at Theodore being able to have a huge takeaway here with 3.54 remaining. You look at Baker only having one timeout, Theodore having none. So clock management is going to be critical. You know that Theodore is going to run the ball between, between the tackles between with Big Rogers Kirsten in the Rogers backfield. In the backfield. Right now it's all ball control. And Kirsten Rogers, he's ball controlling it. And I believe he's going to control it and take it to the house. 10-5 touchdown, Corey, yards. that's an 84-yard no, it touchdown. Is not. It's coming oh, back. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's going to come back. back. It's There's coming a back. penalty flag down, well, and look we're going to bring Alan it Duhon on back. Thing. Holding, come on back. Well, as wow. soon as you strike up the band for Theodore, Baker's band decides to strike it up, too, because they know that play is coming back, and Kirsten just got him some great exercise <laughs> because, and so did the offensive line, but if we're able to replay that, I just want you to look at the burst of this young man. Oh, it's the offense. Remain first down. That's the worst thing that could have happened because you look at where the ball was spotted and now you back it up from the penalty. You take away a touchdown yeah. off of the board, but I'm still going to feed Rodgers. Well, you have to at this point. You have no timeouts. You want to keep the ball and play. Baker only has one timeout, and they are down five points here. What a fun so contest, that spot though. foul. Great ball game tonight. Let's see where they're going to place this at, Corey. And as you just when you thought someone was going to catch Rodgers, the energy just kept going. The burst just kept going. Well, I tell you what. But it all man, was for naught. If that's what he does on a gimpy wheel, I would hate to see what he can do at 100%. Yeah. And we have seen what he's able to do at 100% because he's been playing running back for four plus years now for Theodore. So it looks like this ball is going to be spotted at 13, I believe. I'll tell you what, too, though. Rodgers has dropped a little weight, and even if you're dropping five to 10 pounds for a running back, that helps with the explosiveness of the particular well, no, not runner. Th not 13, Corey, I'm sorry. It looks like the 11. Direct snap to Demetrius Pogue. He gets the first down, gets the Bobcats out of the hole, and we have an injured Baker player on the field. Looks like one of the linebackers, I believe, number 57 for Baker. But Pogue, knowing what to do with it, we're going to have the clock stop at 3.28 remaining. He tries to keep it in bounds. The sticks are going to move when we have the injured player tended to and moved off the field. We'll see if Duhon winds his arm 
and keeps the clock running. Number 57 for Baker down on the field right there. See if we can get a name on him. He's not on our two deep. Unless it's 52, which would be Dylan Hudson, but it looks like 57, Corey. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. But it is 57. I don't see a 57 on the roster. But he's up, walking off with his own power. That's a good sign right there. Well, here we are. Keep we our eyes know. on Allen Duhon, like you said, see if he winds the clock. We know it's first and 10. It is first and 10. From the 31-yard line of the Bobcats. And, you know, you, you, you have the ability to RPO with your quarterback, poke. The biggest thing is, though, not to turn over the football. You know, Baker has the can opener drill also. That's right. To where they try to rip and strip the football away. Theodore has done a good job of holding on to it. 20 yard run right there by Demetrius Pole Gets Theodore out of the hole. And there's Alan Duhon winding the clock, ready for play. And Cor, I'm with you. I'm thinking uh, at this point, if Theodore can maintain control of this ball, and run the clock out. I'm thinking Demetrius Pogue for the uh, Career Tech Education Player of the Game. Hand off up the middle to Palmore. He picks up about four, maybe about three yards. That's what the PA guy calls it, so we'll go with that. Second and seven coming up here for the Bobcats. Tell you what, Bryant and Theodore will be a humdinger next week. It sure will. For two possibly two and old teams meeting each other down in Bobcat Nation. 28-12, Bryant over MGM tonight. And Coach Collier instructing the young man to use as much clock as you can. They go to Kirsten Rogers. I believe they may give him some forward progress on that one, Corey. So it looks like maybe third and about six coming up, possibly, or a long five here. Again, Baker only having one timeout remaining. One. With 155 here, going to bring up third down and seven yards to go. You know they're not going to pass the ball here, but they are going to use as much time as possible as they can as there's like 15 seconds now on the play clock on the field. Oh, yeah. They're going to burn as much as this as they can. Ball on the 36-yard line. A first down here would pretty much probably seal the deal for the ball game. Direct snap to Pogue. And Corey, that's probably going to do it as he crosses the midfield stripe. I don't see any flags on the play. And that first down pretty much will probably seal the deal. One injured Baker Hornet on the field. Ty Gould, number 15, right there at the midfield stripe. Baker all-time 226 wins in the school history. Only 8 and 46 versus the Theodore Bobcats. And you start talking about Theodore. Theodore has over 410 wins wow. as a school and now moves on trying to make that to 47 and 8 versus the Baker Hornets. Next week we're coming back to Clem Richardson Stadium for another 7A Region 1 battle, Murphy and Davidson. They've got a lot to live up to tonight, Corey. 36-31, the points putting up tonight. So uh, I'm hoping uh, our Panthers will put some points there. They haven't scored anything this season so far. Yeah, you call it big boy football. Yeah. And it's two teams that are searching for their first win of the season next week. But this Baker Hornet team, if they're not able to come away with this win, they're at Foley next week, which had that big win at Lad People Stadium last night over the Murphy Panthers. And you're glad to see this young man able to get up and walk off. And that is it's correct. just, you don't, you're not quite sure. He looks like he's a little gimpy on his ankle. But it does look like the ankle there, Core. Sure does. What you want to see is guys find a way to make it into next week's contest because you know, my hat's off to these bands, cheerleaders, and football team because I came out here to watch both of these teams practice this week at their respective schools. And 
when you have a heat index close to 108, 109. Oh, man, that's huge. It, it, it's brutal, Al. And they got they have fought through it, and credit to both of these teams. Looks like Theodore's going to go to the victory formation. They're just going to take a knee. I mean, Baker can only stop the clock one time. They have one timeout. Coach Norman is going to probably use it right there. And look at Theodore. They have Poe. They have Rogers. They have Palmore. So all they have to do is keep the ball, and they can just milk the clock right here, Cora. So let's put it up right here. Career Tech Education Player of the Game. I'm with you, Cora, all the way. Demetrius Pogue had two touchdowns tonight, a five-yard run. Also had a 17-yard run. But it was his control and his management of the game and the big plays in between those touchdowns. And I say he earned it tonight. Yeah, I mean, the th biggest thing is he didn't really do anything to hurt his team. And that's what you want to see out of a, a first-year quarterback uh, for the Theodore if Bobcats. If anything, that, that, that first possession when he, his knee went down to punt. But, but from then on, Corey, you know, I, he's, I don't he's hold been, that against him as a punter right. because, uh, you know, he's not comfortable in that punting situation. Right. But he just did the best to get a low snap didn't realize that he tried to keep that one knee up and wasn't able to. It led to six points for the Baker Hornets. But as the quarterback, he's done a oh, wonderful job, awesome job. tonight. Awesome and job. this is a big-time win for this Bobcat program. It sure but is. The Hornets are right here where they want to be. Didn't get over that hump tonight. but Three turnovers, one interception, two fumbles. Points off turnovers points are off huge. Turnovers. You know, you go back and you look at the checklist that I had, control of the crowd. Theodore was able to do that in spurts. The big Bobcat push up front was huge, and the takeaways from turnovers was the biggest factor. It really tonight. was. And where the turnovers occurred for Baker, Absolutely. that was really what hurt them because the crowd was right behind them on this last fumble that they lost, and the air just got deflated out of the stadium. And you look at the two missed field goals by Theodore. They were over to overcome it, right. But the one field goal that was scored in the red zone by Baker, if they had six points instead of, instead of three, you're looking at a, a different score also. Uh, but nonetheless, these two teams went blow for blow and toe to toe <laughs> in an outstanding 7A Region 1 contest. A great way to wrap up this second week of action here for high school football. Theodore gets the win 36-31. to 31. That's five in a row over Baker. And I know this one is going to sting for the Hornets tonight. Stinging in the wrong way because they came out and they punched Theodore in the mouth. They showed them we're ready to play tonight. Just couldn't deliver on the victory court. Yeah, I mean, the early momentum, 14-0, to zero, and then yeah. 15 unanswered points by Theodore, the two-point conversion, and another touchdown, right. which led to a little momentum. And then as soon as Baker scores on a field goal, Theodore turns around and has a kickoff return for some 60 yards, and that changes momentum too. Instantly. Theodore is able to score right before the half, and that gives them a little padded cushion going into the locker room. Yeah. Baker's not able to score out of the locker room. And, Al, what a great game by both of these teams. 7A really Region 1. I mean, we had scoring in every quarter tonight, Corey. We had big points. Theodore put up three touchdowns in the second quarter alone going into the halftime, up 29-17. Just a great contest. I hope we're able to talk with uh, Eric Collier down on the sidelines could get some comments from him because we had controversial calls. Yeah. We had some coaches calling timeouts to say, look, I need to talk to you, Mr. Duhon, about that. Absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, again, coaches saying, hey, should I have invested back in the instant replay? And that's something to where when you have an opportunity to go back and look at it or just review it with that red flag, it is available in AHSAA play. Right. But the school has to provide it. And Baker had it one year ago but sure does did. not have it this year. We have the benefit of instant replay here. But there were a couple of calls that went both ways for both teams, but a huge win for the Bobcat Nation. All right, let's take it down to the sidelines and talk with winning coach Eric Collier of the Theodore Bobcats. Coach Collier, great win tonight, but it was hard fought. The Baker Hornets really put up a fight. It was a great ball game. You know, they got out early and got on us, and uh, we battled and got back in it. Uh, I, I tell you, yeah. You paid money tonight, you got your money's worth here tonight. <laughs> You're right about that, Coach. Corey and I were talking about some, some controversial calls tonight. You burned your last time out at 9.33 remaining in the contest. You really wanted to get the right play call at that time. And unfortunately, Frias misses two field goals, but you guys can overcome it with ball control in the end. 
Well, I, I'll be honest with you. Defense stepped up and had two big turnovers. Actually, three big turnovers That's on right. the night. And it's probably the difference in the ball game is turnovers. Coach, talk about your quarterback. His first year getting an opportunity to get under center. He's an RPO type of guy. The versatility that he brings really showed great leadership and composure tonight. And to me, that was the difference in him being the most valuable player for your team. He was. I, you know, Kirsten rolled his ankle right there at the end of the second. Uh, and he played the second half, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't full speed. He got out one time. Uh, but uh, Demetrius really stepped up and played well for us. Uh, but I tell you, I'm, I'm proud of where our defense played. Baker's got a great ball team. They battle. They've come a long way in a year. Steve's doing a great job with those guys. Uh, officiating was a really questionable tonight. But uh, other than that, I thought it was a great ball game. All right, Coach, congratulations on the win. 2-0 to start the season. We wish you the best of luck the rest of the year. All right? Thank you, guys. All right, Corey, we had a good one tonight, man. It was Baker and Theodore going head-to-head. -head. Next week, it's going to be Murphy and Davison as we come back here to Clem Richardson Stadium. For our producer, Quentin Howard, Director Wade Ford, our statistician, China Powell, and Matt Moore, my buddy Corey Bounty, I'm Al Wheaton saying thank you for watching tonight. What a ball game. Theodore gets the win for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week brought to you by Bishop State. Have yourself a great night.